So, I would like to start with a quotation from Mr. Wendelberry. He says, it is not from ourselves that we learn to be better than we are. So we are here to learn from everyone, whether it will be the attendees who are attending the webinar today or our panelists, our speakers, everyone. So good morning, everyone. I would like to welcome all of you on behalf of ICA India. And I'm Alma Sabed, and I'll be your host for the session today. As we all know that the pandemic situation we are in today is making everyone suffer at different levels. And ICA India is constantly uh, working uh, from few years uh, in organizing such meaningful uh, conferences in different parts of India. And today we have come together to discuss this current situation. And as educators, as the main pillar of the society, how we can help people around us, our students, parents, and the society at large to overcome this. So I will not take much of your time now and would like to invite someone who doesn't need any introduction. And from my personal experience, as I was sharing it earlier with everyone, uh, she's the person with most positive aura. When I recall the first time meeting her, I met her at her home. And as soon as she entered the room, there was a big smile on my face. And this is what her presence can do to you. She is a retired professor in department, from the Department of Psychology and University of Delhi with a doctorate in uh, clinical psychology. She's a recipient of the Best Educationist Award by Raja Ram Mohan Rai Foundation, Delhi. She has been conferred with the Lifetime Achievement Award by Indra Prastha College of Delhi University for contribution in the field of clinical psychology and Global Indian Award for Excellence in Psychology by Global Indian Congress San Francisco. She has also created and published brutal relaxation techniques in national research journals. She is none other than Dr. Aruna Bruta. So ma'am, over to you now. Okay, thank you, Almas. And um, I'm a little embarrassed because I'm not all that. I don't know how many things happen, how many things happen, आपकी बात की एक चीज बुरी लगी और वो हर पेरेंट में मुझे दिखती है कि लॉकडाउन इज वी आर सफरिंग बिकॉज़ ऑफ लॉकडाउन आई डोंट थिंक वी आर सफरिंग इट इज जस्ट आवर एटीट्यूड टुवर्ड्स लॉकडाउन एंड देयरफॉर टुडे यू विल बी रियली सरप्राइज्ड व्हाट आई एम गोइंग टू स्पीक ऑन इज नॉट एट ऑल थ्योरी बेस्ड यू वोंट अंडरस्टैंड हाउ मेनी कॉल्स इन अ डे आई गेट discussing mental health issues with all kinds of age people you know background say for example adolescents would call me parents would call me anxiety ho rahi hai job to nahi chali jayegi bacche tang kar rahe hain jabki bacche koi tang nahi kar rahe hain aap tang ho rahe hain right and this was the reason that prompted me to give the title increasing mental health issues in social distancing ki ye jab bhi aap social distancing ki baat karte ho to you you talk ke bas ab kya hona hai ab kya ho raha hai mujhe mana kyu kar rahe ho so these kind of issues you know uh, come in so today allow me to share with you what kind of experiences i am uh, getting so the next one nahi aa rahi next one uh mere liye se ho sakta i was trying to see these are all the technological issues uh the next one okay so i think that what we are really uh, going through is a cognitive dissonance now why this cognitive dissonance because there are beliefs and there are disbeliefs about everything now what are the everything that i had narrowed down i would narrow down this terrible word corona virus and it's only terrible till we find a medicine for it and till we have a vaccine for it otherwise jo jo dekh rahe hain main sabko ek reminder dena chahti hu jab dengue ya dengue jo bhi aap pronounce karte ho aaya tha to sab dar gaye the ओहो क्या होगा मर जाएंगे ये होगा वो होगा एंड अब 
अब जब बात होती है ओह हो उसको डेंगू हुआ हुआ है ठीक है ना ठीक है ना बिकॉज वीव स्टार्टेड टू अंडरस्टैंड इट बिकॉज वीव स्टार्टेड टू एक्सेप्ट इट एंड वी वी हैव ऑल्सो रियलाइज वेल इज नॉट कंपेरेबल कि वो इन्फेक्शियस नहीं है ऐसा राइट सो वी आर एबल टू नॉक डाउन द कॉज एंड द ट्रीटमेंट फॉर इट सिमिलरली इससे पहले अगर मैं ले जाऊं जो बड़े लोग हैं उम्र में वो रियलाइज करेंगे अपेंडिक्स को कितना फेयर करते थे किडनी स्टोन्स को कितना फेयर करते थे एस्तमा को कितना फेयर करते थे बट दिस करोना इज अ न्यू थिंग इन लाइफ तो इसका बिलीफ ही नहीं अभी सेट अप हुआ अपने कॉग्नेटिव की माटा में इन द ब्रेन सो वेन Others tell you, doctors tell you, government tells you, others tell you that if you sneeze outside, you can get infected. If you go outside, you can get infected. If one person is a silent carrier also, and if he sneezes or you touch him, five people are going to be infected. What is belief for that? You don't trust it. You don't start believing in it, and therefore, what happens? You feel that bekar me lockdown kia hua. बेकार में मना करते हैं बाहर जाना बिकॉज बाहर जाना इज गुड बिकॉज इन क्लास वन एंड क्लास टू वी वर टॉट मैन इज अ सोशल एनिमल राइट सो वो हम बाहर जाना है बाहर जाना है थिंग्स लाइक दैट अब सडनली कहो बाहर मत जाना इन्फेक्शन हो जाएगी मॉल बंद कर दिए गए हैं यू नो टीवी ये सिनेमा सेंटर्स बंद कर दिए गए हैं एंड सो एवरीबडी गेट्स डिसोनेंट अबाउट इट क्यों बंद किए इससे क्या करोना होने वाला है ऐसे होता है करोना यू नो सो यू आर इन दिस बिलीव दे फॉर यू आर इन अ डिफेंस मेकेनिज्म ऑफ डिनाइल कुछ नहीं होने वाला एज ए एग्जैजरेट करते हैं विच इज नॉट ट्रू बिकॉज वॉट यू आर वॉचिंग हाउ द हॉस्पिटल आर बींग क्राउडेड विद दस सो देर इज अ कॉन्सोनेंस हाँ ऐसा हो रहा है and there's a disbelief that leads to dissonance ki nahi 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 aisa nahi ho sakta so you are facing a lot of uh, conflicts you know jaise ab bacche hain we are encouraging them as over indulging parents uh, why aren't you playing some game why aren't you in a team of your school uh, why are you not joining the photography club why are you not in the debating society so we are encouraging the children on one hand and now we have got them at home so neither are the children used to having us and nor are the parents used to having the children full time so they've lost we had become so mechanical in our lives bas bas bacche school gaye chalo 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 you know ghar theek karo taiyar ho office jao ab batao chai do batao kya project hai aaj ka kya kaam hai so we became machines so this was very important uh, to understand with the result ab jaise uh, almas ne kaha ki hum suffer kar rahe hain aise ghar mein bhi parents discuss karte rehte hain hum suffer kar rahe hain right so children pick up these words so children also feel suffocated ki ye kya ho raha hai there's no you know daily routine in life we are not getting up in the morning we're not having a bath in the morning if our parents tell us then we think they are nagging us they don't let it us be so i think that we are facing a more anger and more uh, aggression we are facing either lack of sleep or there is over sleep and there are fearful dreams ye maine points usme se nikale jo mujhe telephones aate hain doc i can't sleep mujhe lagta hai mujhe corona ho jayega so there is anxiety doc i can't sleep because i can't stay at home i smoke and my parents will get to know that i smoke so i have to go out and smoke but my father will beat me up physical assault my father will beat me up if i go downstairs do you see all that happening between the parent uh, and the child dreams ki baat to aap sun ke bhi hairan honge there are elders also adults coming and telling me we are having fearful dreams and this emanates out of their anxiety will i lose my job what's going to happen children are listening to that what parents are discussing so then what happens at that time uh children become insecure but the 
a father is spreading and expressing anxiety. These are some of the issues that are arising out of beliefs and cognitive dissonance. What is happening to us? So then I feel that when we are listening, who's and not taking time out for entertainment, we are going to get negative. So what happens, children also learn that. So whatever we keep hearing from each other, we are reinforcing that anxiety in all of us. Therefore, I think we need to understand, can we change this? Will there be a role that educators and counselors can play? Can they reshape in this lockdown such kinds of beliefs and attitudes? I think children and, and parents and adolescents or adult children and grandparents, I think they should learn how to be with each other. They've unlearned that. I've heard so many grandparents telling me, Are and the beta says, Kya hai, har bas rehte ho, chup karo, uski aaj online class ho rahi hai. So there is anger coming out, there is intolerance. But parents must learn what to talk at home. What can the school do? I agree that there is a lot, a lot of pressure on teachers. To teach in the class is one thing. But to teach online is a totally different thing. It's a very serious phenomenon. Can we make it a little more playful? Can we make it a little more interesting? That is very important. Can there be classes where extracurricular activities can be used over there? For example, what if you give homework for children where they can do story writing, essay writing. How would I have dealt with Corona? How do I understand Corona? What it is like to be living 24 seven in a family? What it is like to be having virtual friends and not going into the park, you know? So if these kinds of homeworks could be added, the extracurricular, Abhi kya ho raha hai? Maths ki class ho rahi hai, science ki class ho rahi hai, SST ki classes ho rahi hai. We were very grateful to the teachers that they were working so hard that they take these classes. But at the same time, could there be someone who lightens the hearts of these people by asking them to get into creative work? Okay, today you make any project you feel like and display it on the screen and let all the others see. That could be a class by itself. I think our attitude towards lockdown will come down, you know, in terms of negativity. Therefore, I think, can we play games online? Can we play cricket online? Can we play baseball on, online? Can we play basketball online? and have a period for that, which is a games period. Can we follow the, the timetable of every class as it is, give them a break at that time. And I think, I think parents will bless the teachers, the principal, the headmistress, the teacher in charge. I think parents will bless because parents don't know how to cope with all the work, especially parents think Cooking is something that will attract children. So the working parents are working from home, but they're also cooking fancy things to attract and keep the children occupied. Agreed. It is a big way to get into it, but it's not the only way to get into it. Let me give you another point. Parents are experiencing a different kind of anxiety. I get calls. Doc, my child And then I say, Why? Pe, 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 PC. Pe, kya kar rahe ho? Kaha, agar wo sofe pe chade, hoode, ho, 
कि इतने बड़े लौंठे हो गए और सोफे पे चढ़ के कूद रहे हो स्प्रिंग्स खराब हो जाएंगे सोफे के तो उसकी एक्स्ट्रा एनर्जी कहीं यूज करने नहीं देते आप जब स्कूल टीचर्स इस तरह की एक्स्ट्रा करिकुलर एक्टिविटीज के डालेंगे तो आप कहोगे कि वो स्क्रीन देखता रहता है वो स्क्रीन पे ही गेम्स खेलता रहता है क्या आप खेलने को तैयार हो वेल डन वाई डोंट यू प्ले कैरम विद ईच अदर वाई डोंट यू प्ले ट्रेड विद ईच अदर वाई डोंट यू प्ले सो मेनी गेम्स अंताक्षरी वो कैबुलरी तो बढ़ाओ Why don't you play Sudoku with your children? Look at the general knowledge that will come out of it. Therefore, I think that educators should implement these kinds of ideas, you know. And in this way, we will be facilitating good habits, and we'll be able to change lifestyles. Kaise? Lot of parents are saying, "Yar, ye mask to musibat hai." मुझे तो सांस ही नहीं आता एंड चिल्ड्रन आर लिसनिंग टू इट वट आर द चिल्ड्रन गोइंग टू डू अब जब स्कूल खुलेंगे द चिल्ड्रन विल से हाँ मुझे सांस ही नहीं आता ये वो कैबुलरी कहाँ से उठाई पेरेंट्स से उठाई ओहो ये ग्लव्स क्यों पहनने हर वक्त ग्लव्स पहन के हम हेलो हाय करेंगे या काम करेंगे और नहीं नहीं मैं स्कूल में किसी को टच कर गया तो तो मुझे कुछ हो जाएगा मुझे कोरोना हो जाएगा मुझे हॉस्पिटल वाले पकड़ के ले जाएंगे मम्मी पापा से मिलने नहीं देंगे डू यू सी दी एंगजाइटी कमिंग अप बट हुज गिवन दीज वो कैपिलरीज वी हैव टू एक्सेप्ट लाइफ स्टाइल आर गोइंग टू चेंज वी हैव टू एक्सेप्ट दैट देर विल बी मोर केयर इन आर सोशल एक्सचेंज We can't say hello, yar. Kya hal hai? And hug him or touch him. We cannot do that, and we should not do it. And I'm sure we will not do it. We'll try to keep away. We'll be wearing gloves. We'll be wearing a mask. आपको पता है अब क्या competition आने हैं? जैसे uniform school की उतरी घर में आके आप किसी की पहले party पे जाते थे, तो आप सोचते थे नहीं उससे better dress होनी चाहिए. नहीं ये ड्रेस मैं रिपीट नहीं कर सकती एटसेट्रा अब आप ये कहोगे मेरे पास 25 मास्क चाहिए ये मास्क इससे मैच नहीं करता ये मास्क इस डिजाइन का है ये मास्क तो मैं कल भी पहन के गया था मुझे कोई डिफरेंट कलर का डिफरेंट डिजाइन का मास्क दीजिए दीज लाइफ स्टाइल आर गोइंग टू कम दिस इज वेरी इम्पोर्टेंट फॉर अस दैट वी अंडरस्टैंड हाउ वी आर गोइंग टू एक्सेप्ट Our lifestyles. Children, when they come back from school, they will have to have a bath. You cannot say that they will not have a bath. It's very important. But my main point for today is, if we can be positive about lockdown, if we can be positive about Corona, I'm sure that we'll have better patience. we will be less insecure we will be less hypochondriac we will be less tense we will be less anxious provided we provide a social life on screen and stop thinking that our children are going to become gaming addicts now how to prevent that there have to be very strict adherence of timings this is my study time this is my play time and i cannot spend the night doing pubg i cannot do do uh, all night i cannot do any chatting that's not done whether you are an adolescent or you are an adult or you are a college going person or you are a school going person or you are a university going person or you are an earning person don't think adults are adults i think most adults never grow up they are the worst children in the house so i think it's a huge task for teachers but it's a herculean task for counselors to take up parents what we talk how we walk what is our attitude how do we engage ourselves children learn from us i've seen 
mothers and fathers going on and on and on and on on games, on chat, on websites. I don't know whether they are harmful websites or they are good websites. The fact is you have no sense of time management. So this needs to be taught how time management can, can work with us, newer habits will be perceived with a lot of alternatives in life. They will be accepted. And if counselors organize such webinars for their children's parents, I think you are doing a very noble job for the society and for all the times to come. I can go on and on, but the advantage of social distancing and this webinar is a proof that we are doing it from home on the net. And we are still, I feel that I am together with all of you and I don't feel distanced at all. I already have this positive attitude that this screen before me is my you know, seminar room and I am thinking that this seminar room is better than the seminar room I used to have with Nazirji. And the only thing I miss is Nazirji's tea and his lunch. And I think that we can all have lunch together at some lunch time. And we'd all think Nazirji has given us this lunch. I'm very grateful to Almas. I'm very grateful to Nazirji for uh, organizing such uh, a beautiful topic and getting uh, people together. I am surprised that we have participants. I thought it would be the first time, who will come, who will not come, who will sign in, who will have time for it. Everyone is sitting in the corner, everyone is sitting in the corner. What happened, what happened, what happened, what happened. Modi sahab, where did you bring this corona? And poor Modi बेचारे जूते ही खाते रहते हैं अच्छा काम करें तो वो बुरे हैं बुरा काम करें तो वो बुरे हैं आप लोग इतने बड़े देश को संभाल के दिखा दो तो मैं पूछूं कि क्या है the very fact the very fact that we have people walking on the roads to reach their homes is an act of anxiety they had no patience to wait for trains you can't say, train start kar rahe hai, aaj hi kar do. There are a lot of formalities, there are a lot of arrangements in that. You can't wait and you start walking. Phir pandre din ki quarantine. Phir dhyan aega, oh ho, oh, abhi to earn karna hai, chalo wapis. Phir karona carriers honge. And then again quarantine for 15 days. How much have we lost? Tahi dil se, patience se, अपने कोग्निशन से कोई नई चीज को आप एक्सेप्ट नहीं करना चाहते आप इमोशनल होके एक्सेप्ट करते हो रिजेक्ट करते हो थोड़ा सा ठंडे दिल से सोचो लॉकडाउन इस सच सच अ ब्लेसिंग दैट टुडे आई हैव एवरीबडी इन माय फैमिली विद मी वर्किंग ऑन देयर ओन मे बी नॉट टॉकिंग टू इच अदर एट टाइम्स but your lunch or dinner hour hota hai, oh, oh, we are blessed to have children and grandchildren having food together. Kya lockdown ki baat kar rahe ho? Abhi jao, chalo. Abhi jao, sadak pe, nikalo car. Phir rona shuru karo. Ye traffic jam hai. Ye itna pollution hai. Kya musibat hai. Kab chutti milegi. Jab mil gai to aapko, usko beautifully utilize karna nahi aata. This is the thought that I'm giving you. इससे हमारी मेंटल हेल्थ इश्यूज कम हो सकते हैं अगर हम प्राणायाम वॉक अपनी घर में ही रखें यू विल बी सरप्राइज्ड के सोशल डिस्टेंस तो है ही नहीं सिर्फ फिजिकल डिस्टेंस हुआ है मुझे तो समझ नहीं आई सोशल डिस्टेंस कहाँ हुआ है फिजिकल डिस्टेंस हुआ है सोशल डिस्टेंस तो हुआ ही नहीं है हम तो अभी भी देखो आपके साथ ही बैठे हुए हैं क्यों अलमास आई एम स्टिल सिटिंग विद यू वेयर इज द सोशल डिस्टेंस Right? Thank you very much for the opportunity. I could go on and on. There are so many mental health issues coming up. I am worried what is happening in the society. My dear, dear counselors, please come up forward at your own level. Conduct family sessions. They are required. 
rather than children's sessions only. So, Nazir ji, thank you for the opportunity. Almas, thank you for the opportunity. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much, you very much for your uh, very enlightening and insightful thoughts. And uh, I have few announcements before I take the questions for you. So this is for all the attendees that you can uh, actually post your questions in Q&A box. And we will raise your questions to all the speakers. And I have one more announcement for the speakers we have. If you hear this sound, that means we have only two minutes left for your session and you have to wrap it up. And now I'm just taking the questions which I've got for Dr. Bruta. Yeah. So, yeah, so this question is from uh, Ms. Lalita Kavyan from uh, Mount St. Mary's, Delhi. She says, how do we compensate for the lack of social interactions in the lives of students in the absence of daily school interactions? Will or won't their social adjustments suffer? Yes, it will suffer to some extent. But how would you like it if these screens were not there? What if Corona had come when I was growing up? There would be no screens, there would be nothing. And how would I have spent my time all the time doing Kathak, Bharatnatyam, radio, no television. So I think your generation, Lalita ji, is so blessed that this is only physical distance and not social distance. Yes, I'm worried that our social skills, which uh, Dr. Jitinder Nakpal will be talking about, but your social skills will come down when you are physically with each other, but what you have learned as your skills all your life, you're not going to forget them in six months. How do you know when we have a vaccine, when we have medicines, corona will be just like any other pneumonia and you will be fine. Why are you thinking that this has come to stay forever? Thank you, ma'am. Be positive. Uh, the next question is from uh, Ms. Nidhi Mehra. She says, hello, Aruna ma'am. It's always a delight listening to you. When I was your student and today as an attendee, I definitely ugly ro uh, agree role model is the most important point for all the parents to remember. Action speaks louder than words. Thus, what they want their kids to do, show them that. Whole night, one, can be, uh, one can't be on web series and expect kids to sleep at 10. Definitely. Wow, what a good observation, Nidhi ji. Thank you. But I will say you have a lot of responsibility on yourself if you are a counselor. And please conduct more webinars for parents, for grandparents than so for children. Thank you, ma'am. The next question is from uh, Ms. Aarti Bardhan. She says, I'm specifically asking about functional tips to engage the age bracket of 14 to 17 years or 9 to 12th class students towards coping up without adjustment issues within family members as there isn't any physical energy outlet. Ma'am, you're talking about adolescence, the age of turmoil, the age of emotional upheaval, too much energy, too many hormones, and the, the fight with the parents, be normal, don't shout, talk softly, don't uh, get at us. So there is this tussle. If parents learn to understand an adolescent, to engage him fruitfully according to his taste and not your taste, I think there would be a beautiful uh, joining hands with each other. And if parents were to encourage and praise, that is positive reinforcement, reward the child, for studying and coping with 9th, 10th, 11th and 12th, which builds their career, no doubt, which builds their personality also, no doubt. But I think that this is very important. What kind of a relationship are we building with our adolescents? So the entire adolescent uh, psychology has to be understood. And uh, sometimes when children are rude, you don't have to react. If you react politely with a gap of time, 
I think the adolescent would cool down very easily and will learn that anger is not a good tool. But if the father is shouting and throwing things or the mother is shouting and throwing things, I think uh, adolescents find it very easy to take it up and use it as a powerful tool, which is actually a weakness tool. It's not a power tool at all. So build relationships between adolescents and parents. Your webinars should be based on that. Thank you, ma'am. The next question is from uh, Ms. Sangeeta Tripathi. She says, how to console parents who are suffering financial crisis, hence the family atmosphere is compromised. Thank you, ma'am, for asking this question because a lot of my telephone calls go on this. I do video counseling these days, which I never used to like earlier. But these are the questions that I really find difficult to answer. Everybody is living on EMIs. And I know that people have lost almost 70% of their salary. Some have lost 30% of their salary. Some have been laid off. And it is a difficult time. I'm not going to deny that. But I think if we discuss with the children, they will understand. And if we discuss, mind my word, and not express anxiety over it, then otherwise children will become anxious and insecure, right? So we need to explain to them that jobs will come back. It's just a difficult period. So you can also show, show patience by not asking for expensive toys or things and online shopping and things like that. It should come down. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, I would like to request as uh, due to time constraints, I cannot take all the question here. It will, I will be really grateful if you can... Uh, answer the queries in the Q&A box. Uh, we okay. are uh, getting a lot of questions for you. Can you handle that? Okay, so we can handle it. Yeah, thank you ma'am. So I'm just moving on to our next speaker. I would like to invite Ms. Kanchi Khanna. She's the Director Outreach of Priya University and today she'll be discussing on liberal arts, the future of education. Kanchi ma'am, over to you. A very good morning to everyone and thank you uh, ICA, thank you Nazir, thank you Almas for, for having me again on this panel. Uh, I'm so, um, you know, uh, honored to be here with uh, people like Dr. Nagpal and Mrs. Bruta. And uh, Dr. Bruta, it was absolutely a pleasure listening to you. I think it's your, your voice itself is so calming. I think you're the perfect person to go to uh, in such times. So thank you so much. And um, so my topic for today is, um, you know, liberal education for the future. So we really, um, I would like to understand from you, what do you understand from, you know, the, the learning of the future in the first place? Why do we learn? Why, what is this future that we are so worried about that we need to design all our learning towards it? Uh, I think you're experiencing it right now. This is the future that is that is so worrisome sometimes because it's so uncertain. We don't know what's going to happen. In a matter of few weeks, the whole world has shut down. We are all sitting and, you know, wondering what to do and really collecting ourselves. Uh, so, but like all human races and like, um, you know, like all universities, uh, we very quickly moved towards the online platforms and we, we adjusted, we started doing such uh, so, so we are quite resilient, you know, uh, but what brings about this resilience? What is it that makes us uh, so nimble or so adjusting uh, that we don't fall apart when something doesn't go our way? So learning has to be now, more importantly now for our students, this kind of learning that they become resilient, they become dynamic, they become strong emotionally uh, to deal with any uncertainty that comes their way. And I think liberal education, the topic that uh, Almas, you have given me, is really something that can help develop those skills in students. And why does it do so? Uh, to, to, to go back to what is liberal education, liberal education is basically what the word says to be free. It's free learning. Uh, free not, not from the cost perspective, but free in the sense that you are free to pursue and learn what you want to learn. And you're not being 
pushed into little boxes as saying you're a humanity student or you're a science student so you cannot learn uh, psychology or you're a social science student and you can't do this so learning in a liberal environment means that if you are a computer scientist and you want to build the next facebook you are you combine computer science with uh, psychology and maybe also take a few subjects in design so that your Facebook page, uh, your app looks really beautiful. So, you know, it's coming together of subjects. Why is it the futuristic learning? Because that's the way the world functions these days. In our times when I was a kid, if you learned a few technical skills, those technical skills were good for the next 30 years. And I could have a complete career for the next 30 years only knowing those few technical skills. But that's not the world of today. The world of today has changed so much and is changing so constantly. In our times, every 10 years, we had to upskill ourselves, learn new skills. But now that time has come down to two and a half years. Within two to three years, you will have to change what you learned, learn more skills, come on board with uh, smarter skills which, were, which you weren't even expected to have earlier. So how do you become that? Well, liberal education allows you to do that because first of all, uh, you know, the liberal learning environment is such that it's allowing you to choose what you want to study, what I mentioned, right? So which means that in a class, there will be multiple students and all of them will have different subject choices. So one student, say me, has mathematics and economics as my choice subjects. Almas may have mathematics and computer science, and uh, Vikramjit may have mathematics and history. And all three of us will meet in the mathematics class, and all three of us will brainstorm on mathematical problems. So Almas will come with a different mindset. I will come from a different perspective. Vikramjit may come from a different perspective. And all of us are bringing a very holistic learning classroom experience because all three of us are bringing different, different aspects. And nowadays, uh, it's, not, it's not okay to study one subject because when you go into the jobs, you will be expected to know much more. Even if you are a computer scientist, scientist and a coder, you will be expected to know the political scenario in which the company is working. You will be expected to know the economics behind whatever app you are using. You will have to know design. You will have to know psychology. And, and why just jobs, even world's problems? I mean, look at, look at coronavirus now. Would you call it a medical problem? Would you call it a psychological issue? Uh, would, would you know, wouldn't you require a, psycho a psychologist to solve it? That's why we have Dr. Bruta and we have Dr. Nagpal today because it's uh, creating havoc with our minds, right? You, there's an environmental issue to it. There is a, a so societal issue to it. There's an economic uh, you know, battle that we are fighting. So no problem is uh, you know, a singularly focused. You, it'll require many, many ways of thinking and to be able to solve these. So if I say that a liberal education is, is a leadership program, I wouldn't be wrong. Because if you don't have the understanding of many different perspectives to solve a problem, you are not a leader. Then you will just be good for a single job. And probably for 30 years, you will sit at a desk and do that same job. But if you want to be a leader, if you want to be somebody who makes informed decisions, somebody who has a large canvas of perspectives to think, then liberal education is what you need. Because what happens is when you come into these uh, organizations, and I can very confidently talk about all the liberal universities in India, uh, whether it's Kriya, whether it's Ashoka, whether it's Flame, Jindal, uh, uh, Ahmedabad, NMIS, all these are fantastic places to study in. They will take you in into a foundation course where they will help you build your skills. And what are these skills? communication skills, analytical skills, critical thinking skills, uh, design thinking skills, problem solving skills, and they're going to introduce you to different ways of thinking. Now, a humanities person, a sociologist thinks about the world in a different way, and a physicist thinks about it in a different way. So it's important that you understand all these ways of thinking before you decide, what do I want to do? Right. So you may be in your 11th and 12th had physics, chemistry and bio and you thought that's the end of it. That's what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. You suddenly come into a liberal learning institute. You get exposed to sociology, psychology, maybe computer science. And you're like, wow, this is what I wanted to do. So 
at a graduate level, at a, at a college level, we are introducing you to subjects even before you decide. Right? So in the second year, mostly you decide your majors and minors because you have gone through the foundation courses. You have understood what your really what your interests are and you are a far more educated person than anyone else who would have done, uh, you know, their first year of BA or BSc in any other conventional way of learning because you have learned a bit of analytics, you have learned data, you have learned how to deal with technology, you've learned great communication skills and you've been pushed to thinking. The best part about uh, liberal learning is that it pushes you to think and research and that's the best part of it, right? So you start engaging with subjects. You're not just reading them. You're not just rote learning them. You're engaging with them. You're understanding them. You're questioning. So a, a very important part of liberal learning is the, the way we allow students to question, right? They are allowed to question even uh, what the teacher is saying. They're allowed to question what the book is saying because all learning is discussion and debate based. Students will study, read at home, come back, discuss with their teachers. And another part of liberal learning, which is very important, is that students, uh, that uh, teachers are not teachers there. Teachers are mentors there, right? And teachers also become learners in a good liberal university. So everyone learns together because the teacher can't sit back and say, I know everything because he's also working in the same environment. Things for him are changing too. If he or she is not updating herself continuously, then, then she's not an expert at it, right? And at every uh, you know, stage he has to do that. So he learns with the students. Everyone learns together and creates knowledge and create wisdom. Today you have a cell phone in your hands, you have a laptop, you have your tabs, you have information coming from the world. So teaching is no longer about information giving. Teaching has become how to create knowledge and how to make you wise, right? So if, if the course or the curriculum is not pushing you to become wise, then you're not educating yourself. Then you're just learning a few technical skills and you will get that good job. That first good job you will get because you have learned those things. But when you go at the job, are you going to be successful with just those technical skills? No, you're not. You will have to, and you'll have to uh, really struggle to develop those skills, which ideally should have been given to you in your undergraduate program. And your undergraduate program, students and counselors, I want to say to you, is really your journey into self-discovery. Don't think of it as the ultimate course to you know, get a job. I'll do BTEC this, I'll do this, and as a, uh, you know, at the end of it, I'm going to become you know, this analyst and that's the end of it. It's not. Think about, use these three years to grow as an individual, to understand yourself, find your purpose in life and do your masters accordingly. It's your masters which should be actually specialized, which should give you those, because then you'll be 21. You've done it, you've studied it, you've studied multiple subjects. You'll understand what you really want to be instead of, uh, you know, I've seen students in 11th and 12th getting into an, uh, a professional degree that early in life and then regretting five years later saying, oh, this is really not working for me. So take the time, uh, learn in a liberal environment. And I'm not saying that it's not okay to be an engineer. It's not okay to be a doctor. It is, those are fantastic professions, but please educate yourself. If you are in these professional courses, which are not allowing you extra learning, then you need to take charge of your learning. You need to, be, to own it and to say, while I'm studying engineering, I need to study data analytics and I need to study psychology. And most engineering colleges are already offering this multidisciplinary because everyone is waking up to the, to the reality that liberal learning is what is going to uh, create very, very smart uh, workforce for the for the 21st century and beyond and almas tell me if i have two more minutes okay so the the, the one thing that i want to tell you is that that is the reason why uh, liberal learning institutes will not check you in their admissions process they don't check you about your technical skills but they check your attitude they check whether you are a learner all all liberal learning institutes have holistic learning experiences right so pick up a place where you can explore yourself 
when you can understand your purpose in life and make sure that you are uh, you know you're you're studying what you really love to study so if you sit in front of the tv and you watch a 40 minute episode of a particular uh, serial that you love you don't even realize where that 40 minutes went but if you are sitting in a class in a subject that you don't like the 40 minutes looks like a lifetime that's because you don't like it so don't push yourself to take up subjects just because you're worried about jobs no um, get yourself into an into into a pro program which allows you to explore allows you to take up all your interests build those skills which are required for the new workforce and and enjoy you know you should take up a uh, a course or, or a, a career that you will enjoy doing and you will love doing and your entire life will be in a flow state which will you know make you really happy and success in my mind is just satisfaction and happiness much more than money so that's it from me uh, almas i'd love to take questions if you want i can type them as well you're on mute almas thank you very much ma'am so we have one query for you and if any one of you uh, want to have more questions you can drop in your questions in q and a box and she will definitely answer absolutely so there's one question that i can see is uh, uh, ms kanchi how do we prepare students at the school level where the concept of study is still stuck to the blocks of humanities commerce and science yes what are the so, practices of the students? absolutely absolutely that's such a valid question and i know it's such a struggle for cbsc icsc students uh, teachers because they have to rush through the curriculum they have to do so much so my advice to these teachers would be uh, inculcate in your students while you are doing the class a sense of empathy tell them how to be collaborative with each other break up break them up into groups and make them do group studies and group projects that's how they learn and that's what the future of today is the workplace that we will have to collaborate we will have to work with other teams in our workplace but from our childhood we teach them competition in school you have to compete with the child next to you so let try to finish that competition and emphasize more on collaboration the second thing that you can really do is allow them to ask questions it's very difficult for us as adults i know i'm 50 years old it's very difficult for us to say that i may be wrong but please accept that these are youngsters there are unanswered questions in the world that we our generation never answered but the new generation might just answer that they have they are smarter they have evolved allow them to ask questions allow them to debate with you and get into a healthy arguments um, it's not going to undermine your authority really thank you very much ma'am i can see few questions uh, for you in the q and a box you can actually pick up those i'll do that i'll do that thank you so much almas it's a pleasure talking to this audience here thank you ma'am now moving on to our uh, next speaker i would like to uh, invite mr arjun b majumdar Uh, he is the dean admissions and outreach of op jindal global university and he will be discussing uh, the responsibility of higher education institutes in a global pandemic uh, mr mashumdar over to you thank you very much almas uh, thank you very much mr nazir uh, for this wonderful opportunity to speak to so many people who are seem to be very very engaged with whatever conversations happening um <clears throat> a little bit about myself i trained as a lawyer for uh five years and then worked as a lawyer for seven years in new york london and and now india um and then decided that law is not good enough and one needs another challenge so i shifted over to teaching so i teach at the opgen global university where i also handle their admissions and outreach um in terms of the responsibility that higher education institutes have in general one may agree that higher education institutes will have a responsibility to train and to inspire every new generation that comes through however how does that responsibility change amidst a global pandemic now let's take it step by step what's happened to us uh, earlier speakers including uh, dr bruta and and ms khanna they both referred to the pandemic not so much as a medical issue but more of a social issue what does this mean for universities universities have typically been spaces of close face to face interpersonal learning not just between students 
um, and, and, and their professors, but also between amongst the students themselves. Now, amidst a lockdown, amidst a social distancing or physical distancing, as it were, that has gone haywire. There is no more that close face-to-face -face interpersonal learning that is happening. Instead, sometime in early March this year, we were notified that all of our classes would have to go online. And this is something that has happened across the world. It's affected millions of students. It's affected millions of teachers as well. Very quickly, we realized that online learning requires a certain skill set, which many of us don't possess, me and myself included. For in the last seven years that I've been teaching, I've never had to do online, online classes. All of a sudden, you're expecting teachers and students to convert whatever they know about teaching and learning onto online. How did this work out? Well, it's been a mixed bag. For some teachers, it's been great. For some teachers, it has not been. For some teachers who cannot perhaps have, who perhaps have class management issues, those class management issues might increase in an online space. The primary problem that many teachers that I talk to nowadays is that I don't know whether my students are actually paying attention. Where is the responsibility of the teachers or higher education institutes over there? How do we grab the attention of students who might be playing PUBG or Call of Duty or any other video game while they're actually supposed to be in class, right? So the answers to this problem could be multifold. For myself, and in my opinion, one clear answer is to make your classes as engaging as possible. Now here lies another problem, that how do you engage with your classroom when your classroom doesn't really exist in the physical space, right? So suggestions such as using breakout rooms, suggestions such as using um, collaborative events or collaborative activities between students might just help. And at this way, higher education institutes or universities or colleges worldwide should be elevating the level of engagement, not just between students and teachers, but amongst students themselves. We do owe a responsibility to all of our students, their parents, future employers, into creating graduates who think holistically, who think about the world in, in general, and who have a very particular skill set. It's time that we talked about how we changed education, not just from a one-way unilateral that the teacher has knowledge and that knowledge is being imparted to students from that position that we are in right now to a more engaging collaborative effort between students and faculty members. The second responsibility that I see that higher education institutions should have during this global pandemic is that of a restriction stems from a restriction on physical travel. Now note that I'm using the word physical travel and not um, travel in general. Right now I'm sitting in my home in Sonipat near the OP General Global University and I'm talking to some very, very fine people all across India and perhaps even all, all across the world. So we are communicating. However, universities that typically think about classroom space or common spaces, um, those universities are in for a root shock or have been you know, rudely shocked already that those common spaces and classrooms don't exist anymore. Let's take that situation globally. There are, I'm sure, a number of students who aspire to study abroad either right now or later. What happens to them? I've been hearing reports, I've been seeing uh, news, I've been reading news articles about hundreds of thousands of students who were supposed to be going abroad in 2020, but are now putting their plans on hold. What does that mean for universities such as ourselves, such as CREA, such as Ashoka, such as um, you know, Amity or, or Symbiosis, right? What does that mean for us? That even though we might aspire to study abroad, we can't because either admissions in foreign universities have closed, which is perfectly fine, or I've received an admission letter from a foreign university, which is great, highly ranked, highly reputed, but I can't go because the earliest date for appointment for a US visa currently is 21st October 2020. What happens to my first semester? Am I to go online then? Right? So this is the mindset of the student who 
aspires to study abroad, but can't. Where is the responsibility for Indian higher education institutes then? Right? I believe that we do have a responsibility to them as well. Let's look at it this way. Why would a student want to go abroad for higher education? Very simply put, that the perception of foreign universities are of a higher quality exists. That perception is there. Otherwise, why would one, why would one want to go to a Harvard or a Stanford or a Yale or a Columbia or Oxford or Cambridge? That if you were to ask anyone, the perception of these universities is much higher in terms of quality of education than a Jindal or a, or a Kriya or a Ahmedabad. And, and let's be honest, that is the perception, right? So what, one, what, was, what should we do as Indian educators that for these students who wanted to pursue a quality education abroad but can't? We need to elevate the quality of education at our own universities. We need to ensure that these students who had the intelligence, who had the hardworking nature, who had the skills to crack a Harvard, they should be able to get a similar level of education, a similar quality of education in India itself. How does one do this? First, I have a few suggestions for universities or, or counselors who are, who are listening in. First, the ratio of students to faculty plays a huge role in the quality of education. Now, if I were to ask any of you, who is your favorite teacher? You would have a multitude of answers, right? If I were to go to a class in a school and say, who is your favorite teacher? That class itself may have a number of answers because every student perceives a teacher and education in a different way. So asking who is a good teacher or asking where do you find a better education, that's subjective at best. But the number of students to faculty plays a role. How does it play a role? Smaller classrooms make for greater interactive learning. More attention given to students. More personalized attention given to students. So the faculty-student ratio of universities needs, definitely needs to improve. Presently, the UGC, the University Grants Commission, requires that universities and colleges, higher education, have a faculty-student ratio of 1 is to 18. I don't think that's good enough at all. It needs to be better. First. Second, quite eloquently earlier, research. As faculty members, not just in, 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 in universities or colleges, or even in schools, as faculty members, we should be pushing the boundaries of human knowledge on a daily basis. If we, ex shouldn't we be leading by example? Shouldn't we, as university faculty members or high school faculty members, shouldn't we be pushing ourselves to do more research, to, to live by the very diktat that we tell our students um, to go through, that assume nothing, question everything? Faculty involvement in, in research becomes critical, absolutely critical. We need to be publishing more. We need to be writing more. We need to be sharing what we think in terms of new human knowledge with our with our peers, with other faculty members, with our students. I don't think we're doing that enough, right? The third, now that we are in, engaged in research, is to engage students in research ourselves, right? In our own research. So take them along on this journey of thinking up new ideas or making up new arguments that deal with, with issues relating to technology, science, um, society, politics international affairs, environment. Take them along in your journey. Engage students in research. That way, they'll get to learn from the best faculty members, obviously, in the best way possible. Collaborative research with students is something that happens at very, very few universities in India. But it's not so uncommon in foreign universities. I myself uh, did my master's from the United States, and I was privileged to work with some of the best um, law faculty members, where eventually we co-authored a piece. That journey for me was, was transformative. It actually you know, spoke to me to say that you can do this, you, are, you can research, and therefore you should teach as well, right? So 
in terms of higher education in India, we owe it to students, not just going abroad, but even students who choose to remain behind in India. We owe it to them to engage. We owe it to them to elevate the quality of education in India. Now, there is another aspect to this in terms of physical travel. We will see, we will see, and, and, and one might argue that, look, you know, you're, you're talking only about students who can afford to study abroad. Let's take that argument a step further. Somebody who's sitting in Bangalore right now, they might be thinking, wait, hang on, come September, if this pandemic doesn't go away, is it safe for me to travel to Pune or to Delhi or to Calcutta, wherever, right? So these issues will come up even then. And touch wood, let's have, let's hope for a vaccine sooner than later. But what if it doesn't come up? For that student sitting in Bangalore, universities and colleges in Bangalore owe it to that student to provide the same quality of education that will be, that, that the student thinks they'll get in Pune, Delhi or Calcutta. It's not just global, it's national as well. And for us as universities, we owe it to them not just to the students, but to their parents, to their, to their high school teachers, to all stakeholders who are involved in the education sector. And I'm, and I'm very sorry to say this, but as educators, we need to be doing more. We need to be doing better. Um, I know I have another eight minutes, but I would like to reserve this time to take questions. Almas, you're on mute. Thank you very much. And you have thrown light on very important points here. So I would like to invite the queries, uh, the questions from the attendees for you. So there is one question from Ms. Arjuna Goyal. She wants to know, are there any collaboration programs with colleges and schools where we can encourage students to get this experience of research and explorations the students can experience the process of liberal studies and also get prepared for their life in college. Sure. Um, I'm happy to answer this. Uh, in fact, I know for a fact that many private universities, including Kriya, Ashoka, um, ourselves at, at, at OP Jindal, we do have summer programs or winter programs for students where students come to our campus, spend some time with our faculty members, engaging in a university level learning and engage in, in, in research with um, these, these faculty members. It provides for a platform, it provides for a base where students can actually physically um, experience how university teaching is done and how research is done. And effectively going back to the basic tenets of research that assume nothing and question everything. Thank you, sir. thank you very much. Uh, Any one of you who wants to ask anything? Uh, so, yeah, there's one question. In today's times, going to the campus is not possible. So anything online? Well, everything is online. Everything is. And we as educators need to figure out how to make online education possible. For example, a lot of us teachers, we look at, we, we look for visual cues that the student is able to comprehend and understand what we are talking about. When you go online and if the student's video is not on, if the, if the student's webcam is not on, one, one does not have that, that visual effect that maybe a slight nod or a, a cha, this is how it works. That visual cue without the student actually saying to the teacher that I understand what you're saying, we look for those visual cues to get a sense of what, where the class is going. Or if you see that the class is getting switched off, um, you know, you, you move to another aspect or you try something different. You can't have that online or we don't know how to do that online yet. And, you know, if, 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 if a teacher here who knows that and if they could throw some light or some suggestions as to how to make online learning more effective and more useful, please feel free to, to let us know. One suggestion that I have, and this goes back to Dr. Bruta's, um, you know, wonderful talk that she gave earlier today. Um, is that she, she mentioned and, and she waxed eloquent about maintaining a routine. Now, I would like to take a slightly differing opinion here that what online learning has taught us is that not all students have 
this or not all students are comfortable with the same routine. So far, what we've been doing in, in physical classrooms is synchronous learning, right? So, so synchronous learning basically means that when the teacher is teaching, the student is learning, right? The student therefore cannot learn at its own pace. The student therefore cannot learn when the student wants to learn or feels like learning, right? So one way we can use this online space is to, um, is to move from synchronous to asynchronous learning. So instead of having a Zoom call with your students, record a video, right? Let the students watch the video as a lecture, right? Where the students cannot participate. And then later on, have a tutorial session, not with your entire class, but with a smaller group of students one by one, right? A smaller group makes for better engagement. And therefore, you will have elevated, in my opinion, you will have elevated the quality of learning and teaching in your classroom itself, right? But again, this is my opinion. And, and you know, I, I know it differs from Dr. Bruta's opinion, which is also absolutely valid, that students and children do need to maintain a routine. Now, how the routine is maintained or what routine is maintained that I'll, I'll leave to the students and their parents, right? Okay. Um, are there any other questions? Uh, thank you very much, sir. You can actually uh, answer all the queries in the Q&A box and I can answer yeah. questions in the chat box. Thank you very much, Almas. Thank you very much, ICAE. Uh, and it was an absolute pleasure speaking today. Thank, thank you, thank you. Much for joining. So now moving on to our next speaker. Uh, uh, Dr. Jitendra Nakpal, he's MD, DNB, and Program Director at Expressions India, uh, the National Life Skills Values Community and School Wellness Program. He's also Senior Consultant and in charge, Department of Mental Health and Life Skills Education, Institute of Child Development and Adolescent Health at Muljan Med City. So, sir, over to you. Uh, Dr. Nakpal, over to you. I think there's some technical issues with this video. Just give us two minutes. Almas, can I talk to you for a sec? Uh, yes, ma'am, definitely. Uh, this is in comment to uh, Professor Majumdar, the great lawyer. Uh, I never said that the routine has to be common to all kids. Everybody can choose their routine, but there should be a routine. That's it. Thank you very much, ma'am. We are starting with uh, Dr. Nagpal's session in a few minutes. I guess there's some technical glitch with his laptop. So I'm just getting him on board. Uh, Dr. Nakpal, can you hear me? I guess he is with us now. So you can start with your session now. Dr. Nakpal, can you hear us? I'm really sorry for this delay. I 
guess this is some technical glitch at his end. He'll be joining us soon. So you can start your session now. Sorry to intervene. I think uh, Almas, Dr. Nakwal is not having a microphone option here. All the other panelists are. But what I see that there is no microphone option showing. Uh, so we can't hear him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just uh, sending him a message now. His server may not be compatible. He may have to change his server. No, he might have to log out and log, log in again. Log in again, yeah. Yeah, to be able to get the mic uh, microphone option. Audio option. Doctor Nagpal, you might need to log out and log in again to get the microphone option. Yeah, it's connecting now. It's done now. I think we'll be able to hear him. Uh, he, he can unmute himself on his own now. Almas, you need to tell him. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. With your session. yes okay. sir. We can hear you now, sir. Okay. Uh, audible, visible? Yes, Fine. Yeah. Right, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much. Right. Hello, yeah. Yes, sir, we can hear you. You can start with your session. Okay. Um, okay, very good afternoon. I think I was uh, just able to snatch a few comments uh, uh, from the previous honorable speakers and uh, more of a learning for me. But um, nonetheless, I think uh, a platform like this is always enriching to all of us. I don't think uh, I would claim to be an expert uh, for this particular topic, but then nonetheless that uh, I think a person who is uh, constantly trying to give answers for questions which are quite uh, uh, new and also uh, sometimes, uh, you know, difficult, that person usually by the exposure to such questions will become an expert. So you may consider me an expert who is trying to give answers to many difficult questions. Uh, that has been the trend in the last about two months, and I think we are quite familiar, we are quite uh, accustomed to the idea of thinking what could be the uh, existential and unknown questions of life and living and livelihood and education and uh, survival, safety, health, uh, difficulty in family environment, in the overall economics of the ecosystem that we are working. Now that has led to a lot of uh, challenges and maybe plausible research in our country, at least in the thought, how much is actually translated or uh, uh, how much is actually felt as a scientific uh, wisdom in the coming months will be seen. And I think all of you are uh, great thinkers who will take it forward by, by giving your own experiences and nuances. Now to uh, look at uh, another major challenge, which is likely to confront. For a moment, please think, please think, suppose all this didn't happen. Suppose there was nothing called COVID-19 and Corona as an era or a 21st century disaster of its kind. Suppose ye nahi hota and we were in a usual day-to-day, -day, you know, rug and rut of life and uh, scaling 14 hours a day, working, getting back 
having to you know uh, stitch across difficult ends every day and the board exams finishing by march end and then we have now the result time probably the results should have come out by now and the whole uh, running helter skelter for admissions the usual life that goes on the question which many youngsters now i have been uh, highly privileged and highly uh, fortunate to interact with a lot of adolescents through our peer educator programs and life skills uh, master trainer programs and i think the one thing i'm learning is that it's high time that we give a voice we give a hearing we give a listening to the youngsters who are in the schools and the early years of their college also why because they are the ones who are telling us somewhere the difference between the two phenomena agar ye covid 19 ka zamana nahi hota to kya hota aur agar covid 19 aa gaya hai to kya possibilities hain i think the critical analysis of such a phenomena is the first homework from the behavioral perspective that we are all supposed to do now maybe individually collectively institution wise and give answers and recommendations to ourselves first it is easy to give recommendations to others it's very important to uh, maybe an awakening to ourselves that am i am i actually accepting it at all am i even accommodating to an iota of degree and then i will be able to adjust isn't it am i first accepting that this is something a phenomena an era sudden unexpected unanticipated absolutely taken across the floor without even a hint or a sparkle about it probably the biggest disaster of the century but there are there are good sides of what nature does isn't it kudrat hame kuch na kuch jo deta hai the mother earth what it has given us today i think it has a hidden agenda about many many good things to happen but that hidden agenda is not in the uh, bigger agenda of thinking and emotions at the moment why why for the simple reason that there is a need for survival you ask many youngsters what they have been reading from the social media hearing and watching i think our messages to survive stay alive the biggest responsibility of humanity is to stay alive to stay safe and overall healthy now does that include our mental health the second question comes first we learn to accept accommodate adjust with the changing hard reality the mental health as a component of existence and well being related to psychosocial support from our family from our education from our teachers something meaningful purposeful and does it have a vision well it didn't have a vision mental health never had a vision because it was never accepted in its complete form when i say emotional will be actually are the harbingers are the messengers for a larger definition a larger vision and a larger construct of education isn't it i remember often i've heard children quoting in their debates and their interactions what uh, mark twain told us long back i'll come to some of the indianized thinking on it he said i've never let my schooling interfere with my education it's only one line but it is a leap in our thinking and that is what is happening schooling beyond education or is it education beyond schooling i think the answer is the second one the big walls of the school are diluted to reach out into the family aren't we familiar with those very nice uh, cynical and humorous messages going around we were told as students as children as adolescents as teenagers don't take the mobile to the school now the school has come into the mobile and it is going to come in a big way the online the chat line and the transmission through virtual media the a b c d and the x y z of education it applies to college it applies to office work later and therefore the foundation years the middle childhood also i don't know whether it will be most appropriate to thinkers like you psychologists mental health professionals have to also come together and give a consensus ke early childhood mein kitna exposure online ka sahi rahega people say 
that in the early years it is uh, going to have an impact more difficult rather than the benefit. So let's see, let's see how it goes. But what I'm trying to say is uh, mental health as a component of good health has been by default largely accepted, going on further acceptance. The adjustable part of life with human behavior as a paradigm, with human behavior as a challenge, and with human mind and behavior and behavioral sciences as a science of greater uh, acceptance without stigma, without condemnation, without discrimination is coming through. Now, these are the perceptions I'm gathering through various interactions with uh, the non-government and the government sector. It is wonderful to see that the emotional well-being of a child, not really a lone child, the emotional well-being of the family is now being considered as a huge research area in the last about one month. There are organizations who have put forward the demand to study how psychosocial support in different age groups, in different uh, special populations, how psychosocial support from the common man. We are not talking about the people governing, people laying the foundations of mental health support. I'm sure Professor Aruna Bruta, by, by her legacy and legendary thought process, would have already told you that. But as learners, we all feel that somewhere the three stages of care, the mind and the psychosocial support, it has probably now, by coincidence and sheer incidental happening of the COVID-19, has brought the three levels of care together. They seem to be inseparable. They seem to be jointed. The preventive and the promotive part of mental health and well-being and emotional well-being on the campus, and the campus can be school at the family and the college in the family. Today, today family is a campus. Today, uh, parents are the teachers. Today, learner is the teacher. And teachers are the learners. That's how the exchange of uh, roles and responsibility is going to happen. I think the mentoring part of the counselors, the facilitation part of the counselors, how they actually lead the education system into a holistic paradigm, the physical, the psychological, and the social, and even the spiritual well-being, is the onus of the counselors now. And why not? Didn't you always want that? Didn't you always feel that counseling is not just about helping the mind? It is about helping lifelong learning and lifelong stability, lifelong success, and lifelong maybe actualization. I thought that was the goal of counseling. It got misconstrued. It got probably misinterpreted as dealing with people who have problems only. Where is the promotional part of counseling? Now come to the data. How many of us are aware, and I think I'm getting aware only now and slowly and gradually. We all know that 10 to 15 percent of India's population, nothing less, but maybe more. 10 to 15 percent of India's population is in need for mental health support of an intensive kind. And how many adolescents do we have? Just calculate. We have about 35 crores of adolescents, which is almost the American population entirely. How many of the children suffer from psychosocial problems of a kind and needing your help as professionals? as mental health professionals, nothing less than 13 to 17%. Now that is crores, by the way. That is crores. That is going to be nothing less than about 15 to 20 crores of people needing help. Do we have the manpower? Do we have the arrangement? In our country, how many counselors are there in the school system? How many counselors are there in the college system? Have you heard of full-fledged counseling centers in the universities? How many are there? Do we have any data? We don't have a data. We don't have a collection of a data in one single platform. That is what is being now recommended. We have recommended that a national database for counseling services should be there. That is how you can plan the tertiary, the secondary, and the primary care services. Where is the remarkable full-fledged counseling centers of our universities? We know, we know there are a few examples in the private and the government sector, but we need at least 60% of the universities to protect the young people of our country in the colleges? Just for a second, think, guess, what is the number of suicides in one year in our universities? I'm talking even the top universities. 10,000 is the number 
given by the National Crime Records Bureau. 10,000 per year suicides in the universities. Can you digest that number? Then what are we doing? COVID-19 has brought in an awakening call. It has completely removed the narrow confines of the portals where we thought that counseling, helping, facilitation of emotional well-being is a secondary phenomena. We don't need it because we are perfect. We are perfect in everything. Well, I think COVID-19 has actually helped us to shake up the fact that we are earth human beings and we are all, we are equally all vulnerable to depression, anxiety, uncertainty, crisis, fear of the unknown, fear of dying, and also drug abuse, accidents of a mental health kind. We are all vulnerable to self-harming. Who is not? So it is a wake-up call to all of us together. And I feel that every teacher is a wonderful counselor. Every parent is a wonderful, meaningful, competent counselor. We need to tap their human resources. I'll give an example. Now, a recently going on uh, study by the uh, National Book Trust of India, that's a pioneering unique study on the psychosocial support during COVID-19. And it covers seven broad areas. Seven broad areas. The psychosocial support being given to children, it's an ongoing study, and the first publication is out in seven books. It is already on the National Book Trust site. You can have a look at it. Uh, how children are responding to the confinement. I don't have to go into detail. I think you're all well-versed with the thought. But there are unique responses. A child is not made, a childhood is not made to be confined. The freedom, the liberty of being under the sky in the playground, with temper tantrums and defiance and hostility, joy, celebrating life, the happy childhood, innocence, all that is confined at the moment. For the last three months and maybe more, we come to understand that below eighth standard, we are not likely to see children going to school for some time, maybe months together. So are we prepared? We need to get prepared. We need to get prepared by the idea that engage them in the order of their own developmental milestones by the age appropriate involvement of their engagement in play, in studies, in family communication, in grandparents' involvement, give the world, give the world, the world of a platform to the children at home to understand that they can actually express the way they want to. We cannot confine them into the four walls, whether it is a school or the family. You know, this is a new age learning. And I think this is going to be. Second, adolescents need a lot of privacy. Who didn't need it? Tell me. I think all of us watching here, discussing and sharing thoughts here, we have all gone through adolescence, I assume. Without that, we wouldn't be sitting here. I believe that every teenager wants privacy. Every teenager wants the peer group interaction. Every teenager wants to have that silent zone with himself. You know, the first time in life, the charm and the challenge of looking at the mirror, admiring oneself, and uh, wanting acknowledgement, validation from the friend, from the family, that you are good. You are actually a good guy and, or a girl who is actually competent for everything in life. Now, this validation is very important. Reinforcement is very important. Positive strokes are very important. Communication is very important. Listening is very important. Leadership is very important. Do we give them? Well, we better give them now. The leadership of the adolescent in defining how we engage during the lockdown period and beyond in the family. There are teenagers coming to us with plans of action. That this is what I believe my family can together do because the teenagers have learned about life skills. They have learned about leadership in school. Now they want to practice it and impose it. No, they wanted to have a family dialogue with it. So the learning school in school, the kids want to do it in their home. That is how you will see the leader tomorrow. But we start giving instructions to them. See, you need to have a timetable, you need to do this, you need to have a structure from 9 to 11, 11 to 1, 1 to 3, the food habit, the diet, the sleep, the exercise, the studies, the entertainment, and shut it. We can't allow them, we can't allow them to do more than that. They will demand it, they will break the hills, probably the defiance and the hostility and the anger will go up. So there should be a dialogue, come to an agreement, okay, tumari baat, tumari baat, and we realize that we all are going through the same boat. There are parents who have been told by the teenagers that wouldn't you like to change your way of interacting with each other? Wouldn't you like to be better with us in the family when you are having the 
children at home. So the way the dad and the mom communicate, I think it's a big lesson coming from the teenagers. And they are giving them the advice of being positive parents, tolerant parents, communicating parents, and also non-helicopter parents. So that you allow the tendency of the child to be the parent. Allow the child to be the parent. Allow the child to be the, uh, the learner and the parent and the teacher. And you will see there is a remarkable way of dealing with you as a family and as a role model. This is a chance to prove that a dad and a mom and a grandfather and grandmother are role models for the children. Otherwise, they will like to be our role models because amidst the dynamic changes the child is going through during the COVID and the beyond, with education coming in, with the challenge of entertainment on the media and the education on the media and the fine blending of that, we need to allow engagement of a kind which is uh, through music, through art, through even maybe recalling the past good memories of the family, make a meaningful intergenerational dialogue. I've come across grandparents uh, recently. I was interacting with an army officer, retired. He's now about 82 years as part of the study for the National Book Trust. And I think what I learned was a great deal. I realized that here is a man who is in his uh, 80s, an octogenarian, and actually feels that this is a beautiful thing for all of us to bond together with a unique intergenerational bond. And he's taken the leadership. He's playing, he's playing with his grandchildren like a child, not like a grandparent. And he's playing around with his own self, with the people around online and sharing very good experiences of the war, about the Second World War and how India went through so difficult times. And I think the grandchildren are amazed at the intellectual and the emotional power of the grandfather who is in his 80s. Otherwise, he would conventionally assume that, oh, 80 plus, sitting in one corner, isolated, with some deficiencies in the hearing and cognition. No, I think they need, they need to be brought back to their childhood, the freedom, the innocence, and the playfulness. They need to be brought back as part of a cohesive, communicating, consistent family environment. Then you see the child, how much the child will learn. We don't need, uh, we don't need so many moral science classes for these children then. They'll learn it at home. The responsibility beyond the social media, the addiction beyond cyber addiction, the addiction beyond being addicted to the friends and gossip only. No, which is part of life. But here is a chance to bond with something new, not the usual one. So that's a part of the great challenge we have within the family. What I also feel that uh, uh, here is a great opportunity for educational institutions to allow great ideas and creative innovation to come from the students, whether you are in college or uh, uh, school, allow their peer chains to develop. I mean, for the last about 14, 15 years, uh, pioneering the peer educators, uh, master trainer programs through teachers, counselors, uh, which is starting again in July now. And I think it is going to be a wonderful chance because we've been receiving so many uh, requests from schools to look at how the adolescent leadership can take shape with the newer, uh, you know, uh, sort of dimensions that are coming across. CBSE has come out with the 21st Century Skills Handbook. It's a wonderful handbook which can actually define how we need to bond the teacher, the student and the parent dialogue for 21st Century Skills in the midst of COVID-19 and beyond. I think we need to bring the students on par as thinkers, as a voice to even suggest to the government what could be the goodness and the betterment for their own personality development rather than only subject teaching. The overall persona, the overall enlightenment of the family going through the uh, uh, areas which are part of our following, which are part of our social distancing, and then making a remarkable difference. So the message is very clear. Let us first accept what is the inevitable. We didn't have a control, no? None of us, no human being on earth had a control on the COVID-19. So what is not controllable, we had to accept it. We had to do the needful to remain alive, remain safe, and the story goes on. So we pray that we do the best for our life and the others, and help others to remain cohesive, communicating, and growing. Now, within the constraints, we need to develop modalities of education, of healthcare, of social justice. Why do we come across rising incidents of child abuse during the lockdown and COVID-19 and beyond? Why are we hearing a multiple uh, 
dimension of domestic violence and gender based violence coming up in the families is there an answer to that is it only because people are confined why are human rights violations being reported by government organizations as a geometrical rise during the lockdown so that means somewhere the children are watching all this they are experiencing all this they are going through the trauma which probably will never get projected will they get help will gender based violence get help will uh, the mental health component of child abuse get help well sitting at home it may be very difficult and going out is not possible for seeking help of the reverend counselors and uh, maybe the school counselors but i'm sure you all have come across children adolescents and uh, even gender issues and gender oppression victims talking to you but then let us let us think of how better the communication to the family can be via media the education because if the online education is confined to subjects it won't really help but the government is working remarkable remarkable to take a personality approach to education rather than an academic syllabus approach to education i think the curriculum goes beyond the syllabus we all know that and the curriculum includes uh, human emotions human rights it includes uh, prevention of any violation it it improves the uh, ability to open up and share what i mean that i'm going through and i wish to share but i don't have a platform so i think it is a great opportunity to transform uh, and serve something which we were not able to do in a large scale magnitude for our country so this is the right time though we are going through a very unfortunate and a very disastrous uh, position both for our nation as well as the world around but then i think uh, this shall also go away this shall also pass didn't we say this to many many a students and had we heard this since our own childhood ye bhi waqt guzar jayega let us wait let us have the patience let us have the tolerance but we maintain compassionate communication don't go through compassion fatigue don't get tired of compassion but maintain a composure and a resonance of being a compassionate communicating patient and a tolerant human being for this the children are looking up to you the adolescents are looking up to you and i think the answer lies first in the family helping the government to carry out the necessary regulations and improve upon the ways and means of uh, great indian education to come into the family and let's hope the school will come back and we shall go to the school and how the schools and colleges become again the corridors of great uh, humming with activity lot of co curricular activities also but then this is not the time to think about what the corridors of the school will offer me it's more important to think of what life can offer me what the indian education and the health system will offer me to the family and myself uh, lastly i'm thankful to all the uh, listeners here and uh, particularly uh, mohammed nazir sahab for having considered uh, this as an important platform for disseminating emotions i thought we all are disseminating emotions thinking to ab sabka sabka chal hi raha hai but bahut kam platform hai jahan pe hum bhi sharing and caring kar sakte hain let us care for each other let us share our thoughts and i think build a consensus around the platform i'm always available whatever best help we can offer in any sort of uh, programming or uh, scientific dialogue with more research i mentioned to you about the uh, the national book trust research about psychosocial support there are very interesting findings for children adolescents the special need children the corona warriors and their mental health uh, problems which are coming up the corona affected families the good research is telling us what families are going through in terms of shock and denial and coping abilities and about the elderly people so there are so many dimensions to psychosocial studies and psychosocial support which you can all be partners and thought uh, communicators at this moment thank you so much uh, gentlemen ladies and all of you thank you very much sir very very enlightening and very insightful thoughts from your side so we have few queries for you so ms lalita kadian from uh, st mary's delhi she says we talk largely of students and their families in need of counseling however a large population of teacher parents remain forgotten i would like to know if specialized counseling sessions can be taken for teachers who have transited phenomenally in the professional space in a very short time in these difficult times thank you ma'am uh, rita ma'am i completely endorse your opinion and let me tell you 
uh, I have been one of the crusaders for staff health policy in the country. The teachers, the staff of the school, and their mental health, their mental health support, their stress management, not now, let me tell you, I'm talking 12 years back when the comprehensive school health program was made and it has gone through a lot of stages. The, the voicing of the opinion that we need while we take care of children, their mental health, their stress, their coping ability, their life skills. What about the teachers? So pedagogical stress, pedagogical coping ability and pedagogical mental health crisis is a bigger challenge in our country. I strongly believe a happy teacher is a happy school. A happy teacher is a happy corridor and a classroom. And a happy teacher is made of what? So many things. The ability to express one's own difficulties and sharing, whether it is in the staff room, whether it is with the families, whether it is the crisis of conducting a parent-teacher's meeting. Well, in a lighter sense, I think uh, the PTM for a teacher is a nightmare day, and both before and after, because there's so much to grapple with the parents, there's so much to convey, but sometimes there are difficulties. So anyway, we don't have the school building right now. So I completely agree that the transition from the face-to-face -face and the offline teaching to online teaching is a remarkable but a challenging and a very stressful revolution for the teaching system in India and therefore for the teachers. I think we have nearly one lakh teachers. One lakh teachers. Can you understand what is the population? And that population needs to undergo a change to reach out to 40 families, not 40 children in one school or one classroom. You are in contact with 40 families. That means about nothing less than about 400 people in one classroom. The parents know what is happening or they are aware or not, I don't know. But parents know that class chal raha hai, teacher online hai. And it is a different kind of a projection of the teacher's own persona, teacher's own ability to communicate, the non-verbal communication, the decorum of the class, how the children respond. We've just come across so many incidents of uh, student behavior on the online classes. Well, that's a different topic altogether, but I think it's worth coming as a dialogue. So I completely empathize and endorse that while we are reaching out into a new education system at the footstep of the Indian family, it is very important to keep in mind the, the mindset and the mind and the mental health of the messenger. I salute all the teachers because I think you are the unsung heroes of our education. You are the frontline warriors of Shiksha Pradali. Sakshartha, you are the you are the warriors of Indian education. I think we need to hear you out at as many platforms. Aapka ventilation, aapka jo emotional support hai, har jagah par milna chahiye, pehle school se milna chahiye. I suggest you should have a self-help group, a catharsis group or a ventilation group of your own uh, school teachers and maybe an inter-school catharsis group which we have suggested and many are forming now at a national level. I suggest that the counselors should help the teachers, not that the counselor is not a teacher. Sometimes counselors also need counseling. We all need that. But then I think we are all partners in action. We need to have that support system for our own timetable, for our own schedule at home, for our own personal life, for our own children, for our own uh, you know day-to-day -day home demands, and then the online teaching hours. So that balancing act, that multitasking of a teacher, is a big challenge. It needs to be addressed in terms of a support, an emotional support at a platform created by the school on a weekly basis, on a fortnightly basis, and let let there be no hiding anything. I think any teacher who has a difficulty in coping with the multiple tasks that he or she has to carry out, we should not feel shy, embarrassed, or stigmatized to create a platform. So I fully appreciate, ma'am. I've elaborated in your support. And I think uh, I'll suggest that you take it forward and we are with you. Let us create more platforms. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for a lovely answer. So I would like to request you to please uh, take a few questions from Q&A box. Uh, uh, we have a few uh, queries for you about the details of the master trainer program you have mentioned. So you can ask uh, those questions from uh, Q&A box and you can write in your answers to the teachers. Surely. Surely. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, yeah. All I wish to tell is that uh, the uh, there are so many books available, the, but the Life Skills Peer Educators Program, many of you are aware, 
we have been receiving calls from students who became the alumni of these peer educator programs last year and uh, complete uh, profile of their life skills leadership for managing emotions managing studies and managing their biological clock on a daily basis sitting at home so these are these are the programs from 15 june onwards we are starting we'll let you know but right now i wish to say that uh, i'm i'm uh, uh, so much amazed at uh, how many uh, more than 1000 students have approached us for the psychology internship it is absolutely free of cost by the way so and we are looking at how the brain mind interface needs to be brought in especially for the 11thies and the 12thies of the uh, psychology group from various schools and uh, we are taking a new dimension of neuro developmental and a neuro psychological approach to covid 19 and beyond and how uh, small time projects can be done by the psychology students to become maybe messengers for their own schools counseling system with the help of the counselor and the psychology teachers so this is uh, just about to start and i'm sure we all need to help them if they need it let's come out and help them they want to learn more let us give them the recent advances in the brain sciences influencing the mind now there are so many studies that tell us that the human brain is complete by 7 8 years isn't it we all know that the human brain growth is complete by 7 8 years of life but after that the exposure the orientations the teenage the adolescence and the challenges how do we maintain that uh, flavor and the luster of the mind and the human brain together you know the brain mind and behavior relationship now these are newer studies which probably we are going to share with the psychology students and i'm most willing to go miles and helping them in whatever capacity thank you thank you very much sir uh, now moving on to our next speaker now thank you thank you uh, thank you very much sir uh, he is uh, associate dean of undergraduate studies at uh, shivnatha university professor rajiv kumar and he will be discussing role of educators amid lockdown our theme of today mr rajiv over to you just give me a second let me do the thank you thank you for joining us i was small ppt i just want to add that okay so i'll just do a share screen and okay So is my screen visible to you? Yes, yes. Okay, perfect. All right. So good afternoon, everybody, and a very, very warm welcome to all of you. Uh, am I audible, loud, and clear? Yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, so uh, thanks for the introduction. My name is Rajiv Kumar Singh. I am associate professor in computer science department at Shivnada University, and also associate dean. uh for the undergraduate studies i am here in snu since the beginning since the first day of uh, the birth of shivnath university and you know uh, my association at snu oh, coupled with the kind of things that shivnath university has been doing in the last 9 9 and a half years has been phenomenal you know and i think in the last 2 and a half month uh shivnath university has actually taken a very bold step in terms of probably the being the first university to move into the online space we were already having lots of uh, you know uh, software as well as hardware preparedness before that and i think that really helped us in the migration it was very very smooth for us uh, no doubt about the fact that uh, there were still challenges which we faced with respect to students with respect to uh, you know faculties and i would like to share some of those experiences for the benefit of all uh all right so you know we all know that what we saw in the pre covid era there was uh there was you know there was a face to face classroom interaction which was happening and there was benefit of that there was many benefit but, but then there are certain things which were also missed for example there are many pedagogical tools which are available in today's time which now we are all exploring 
which were not explored you know despite the fact that th those tools were available online online teaching is not a new concept per se it's just that now majority of people are experiencing that but it was it was already there in the last 10 years many institutions have actually gone online for offering many courses so it was already always there there are many tools which were there which were unexplored by the faculty and thanks to covid i think all our faculties have explored probably all the platforms in the world uh, for them to really understand the benefits which can give you uh, there was one big benefit of, of facebook uh, which was the uh, you know the relationship that you get with the students which is much more easier when you are sitting in front of each other so the social interaction i think that was something which which was phenomenal and i in a university classroom is not the only place of learning there are a lot of other aspects to learning which i think we did miss when we migrated uh, into the into the uh, you know the online space so uh, as i said we were thankfully we were a little better prepared compared to many other places because we are relatively new university so we had most modern infrastructure uh, to help us migrate very very easily we had technology support uh, from hcl so that helped and, and uh, you know our, our overall experience of the post covid teaching had been very very positive but i would as i said i would share some of my experiences uh, with all of you to to make it more uh, you know uh, because they're together only i think the teaching community the university community the school community has to work together to share the best practices uh, so that you know the learning is never compromised and we move forward in the best possible way so here is here are certain questions that i wanted to raise before i move on to what should we do one thing which is you know being talked about is about the perception of students uh, with respect to the online teaching that's one question uh, and the second question is how is the perception of a student if the same faculty is teaching face to face versus uh, online lectures you know so there are two different questions there there is a relationship between uh, is there somebody okay can you all please mute your uh, mic uh, thank you so uh, you know the the perception of students plays a very vital role in many of the things that faculties do and i don't know about schools but in universities every faculty is at the end of the semester there is a rating which students give you know including iit including snu including all the universities i don't know how those ratings will change you know i am also thinking about it because now the whole rating philosophy has to change it's not the same question on which the students would now rate the faculties the other question which many of the faculties are asking is that you know a lot of session is being done for the faculties to prepare them for online teaching but what about students what about parents are they being actually uh, you know taught are they being you know uh, uh, you know taken care of through a community as to how they should behave how they should work in an online environment to get the best of it, best out of it right so i think these are certain things which we need to look at and i i i know every faculty has actually put the best foot forward the kind of effort that you know, school faculties university faculties you know principals uh, school directors counselors you know admission people you know everybody has been you know putting that is something which is phenomenal i think this is one of the uh, i would say it's a resilience of the educational institution which has kept these institutions working despite the fact that the entire country was under a lockdown you know factories were closed offices were closed but the educational stream was actually going on so it's a it's a phenomenal uh, feat by the educational institution and i must congratulate all administrators all counselors all faculties associated with schools and universities this is a phenomenal thing that all of us have done all right so since the we're talking about the role of faculty i think uh, you know we have i am myself a faculty i teach in computer science department as well as i also uh, involved in administration but you know the one thing which definitely differentiates uh, a good faculty from maybe not so good faculty is the way they conduct themselves and i think the time has come to change this role of a faculty Uh, role from the sage on the stage to the guide by the side 
you know, I think we will have to look at this very, very seriously. And, you know, one of the challenges which I've seen in the last two months is people basically transferred their face-to-face -face classroom into an online space. And that was a good thing, but it was not probably the best. We could have done little more tweaking, but I think we all learned from our experience and this two months of experience will go a long way in you know, helping our faculties prepare uh, in the best possible way for the future uh, teaching and learning uh, semesters and years which are going to come. So this is one of the, I, I would say, a transformational shift which is going to happen now. If we need to, uh, if we need to make sure that the learning is not compromised, we'll have to change our role. And this is the role which I think teachers will need to look at. Uh, I would want to talk about this very unique philosophy, which we, uh, you know, and I would talk about it in terms of what I call this as an educational experience. So, you know, what happens is that, and this is something which I saw that I also took my classes online and I saw my children taking classes from the school teachers online. And, uh, you know, I realized that one of the things which with, uh, with which the teachers and the faculty members do struggle is their own presence in a classroom because you know the learning in a classroom doesn't just happen from teachers as I keep saying all the time you know is it's the entire experience which has to be replicated in the online mode and it's not just the classroom teaching so we'll have to do a little more to replicate the educational experience in the online mode and there are many ways to do it there are a lot of different I know innovative ways to do it I think the time is short I can't talk about all of them but there are, and I think there are a lot of uh, papers available uh, which people can actually go through it and maybe try and see if there is a possibility for them to adapt things as per their own personality. But you know, the way teachers uh, conduct themselves in a physical classroom, that is going to change a lot in an online classroom. And uh, so this particular framework, it's a very famous term, which is called as community of inquiry framework. Uh, you know, uh, this we should actually read about and you know the point is that you see it's a social setup school is not I mean it's not a paradise but it's it's a place where paradise can be created you know the classroom with all its limitations it's it's a it's a place of great possibilities and we need to bring all that into our online classes now so therefore this is this community of inquiry framework is a theoretical framework and it is, you know, it's designed for uh, optimal learning from the online environment. And the idea is that it has to support critical thinking. It has to support critical inquiry uh, and discourse among students and teachers, right? So see, the, the fact is that when I stand in my class, there are many other things which actually come together with me. One of the terms I'm calling it as social presence. Uh, and as I said, this is a theoretical framework. You know, there are research papers written about it. And I would urge people to, you know, maybe go through it once if you get your time. Uh, so what is social presence? You see, the ability of participants to identify with the community, you know, communicate purposefully in a trusting environment and develop uh, uh, interpersonal relationship by way of projecting their individual personalities. So I think social presence is something which we'll have to incorporate in our classes. Similarly, you know, we call this cognitive presence, the last one which is mentioned here, you know, the, the extent to which our learners are able to construct and confirm meaning through sustained reflection and discourse is, you know, is, is very, very critical in this form of teaching. And then, of course, the teaching presence is basically the design, the participation, the direction of the cognitive and social processes for the purpose of realizing my true potential. You know, these are the things which we have to bring into our classroom if we want to make it uh, effective. You know, uh, the point here is that we'll have to make the entire educational experience meaningful and worthwhile for the uh, for the learners to be get you know to be engaged in the classroom. It's a very very difficult task. I, I have a child which is uh, six years old. I have another daughter who is ten years old, and I know how difficult it is for the you know. For the teachers to bind them into a classroom, online classroom, and therefore, I think if you if you look at this community of inquiry framework, I would definitely say that it will help you organize your classes in a probably a little better way. 
So this is one uh, suggestion for all of you uh, who want to, who are basically active teachers and who would want to, uh, you know, take some suggestions for for the classes. Okay. So what about, uh, you know, is there other uh, uh, things which we can do uh, to improve? Yes. In simple terms, what are the things that we can do? So one, I think the class needs to be broken into smaller groups. I call this as focus group. Bring it in, into small parts. And of course, you take your online class as one group, but do other activities in smaller groups, right? The way we do it in school. So what we can do is, that is one. The other is, don't try to teach lots of things into one class. And I'm talking about university setup, but the content is too high. There's an exam which is sitting in front of you, which, uh, which has to be adapted. I'm talk, going to talk about the exam as well. So, you know, you'll have to break your contents also into smaller groups. So, you know, you need to break the students into smaller group and you need to break the content into smaller groups. And since I'm talking about teaching as a social phenomenon as well, you need to give students, let's say a group to pre prepare one content and maybe a small, uh, you know, five minute, 10 minute, 15 minute talk or a presentation, which they would, you know, present to the entire class. They need to feel the entire community, you know, Otherwise, I can always, you know, why was distance learning not as respected as a face-to-face -face learning? Because the content is the same, right? It's the, it's the entire community aspect, it's the entire peer learning which is missing. And that's why it's important that we bring that peer learning into the picture. You know, when we teach, we have to, of course, teach, but we need to bring the perspective of peer learning into the whole concept of this, uh, you know, this framework. And... Uh, you know, you'll have to give a lot of things to students to do on their own. So take things beyond your classroom, you know, uh, you know, give them certain things which they can do online, you know, maybe uh, let's say some good fun puzzles, some videos, you know, there are many things, you know, you don't have to recreate everything. You know, in computer science, we call this as a, a very important term, which is called as reuse. Okay. So whatever is available, reuse don't try to discover again i mean it's important for us because there are too many things available already don't try to you know do things again so just go and search and recommend your students to uh, use some of these sources and if you feel that you know that is not good enough you have a lot of videos editing software you can cut them you can merge them you know you can you may not use just 20 minute video just take out two minutes out of that and show that to students. So, you know, if you feel that this two minute is what I want them to see, if it's difficult for you to cut that, you know, it needs certain. Although I think everybody is, you know, expert in doing these things because of the mobile phone. You know, even mobiles have these softwares which can be used to do this. Uh, you can just recommend the time that watch the video from let's say X minute to X minute, and that's it. So I think we need to understand that this beast of online learning is going to stay with us. So it's important that we start combining the online and offline mode. You know, we will open tomorrow, you know, uh, maybe in August, maybe in September, maybe in October, we don't know, but someday we'll start. So the schools will start. But the point is, I think it's not going to be the same again. So we'll have to prepare ourselves, uh, uh, you know, to, uh, to take maximum advantage of what is available, right? So I would say that, this is something which I always recommend, but you know, it has, it has been something which I've been recommending to my faculties, to many other places, but I have myself seen that it's not easy to do. This is called as a flipped classroom approach. And it's not an easy thing. It, you know, it looks very easy when you say it, but it's very difficult uh, when you implement it. You know, you need enough preparation for you to actually get the maximum advantage of flipped classroom. It has been there, you know, people have been talking about it, but it has not been very effective in Indian classroom is what I have seen. You know, and the reason is the, the mindset of students and the faculties, both. So, you know, I think the fact that uh, Corona forced us to go online and now there's a higher acceptability among uh, both the students and faculties, I think this is the right time. Maybe flipped classroom was ahead of time earlier. Now it is right time for us to explore that. And you know, if we want flipped classroom to succeed, we will have to sort of prepare uh, you know, uh, for this as a faculty. And therefore I would say that uh, explore this concept. You know, we'll have to customize things. You, know, you don't have to borrow everything which is there in Harvard or MIT or uh, the best of the schools. You need to look at the best practices, you know, 
take a look at your own students take a look at your own personality look at the subject that you're teaching and then adapt things as per that okay uh, this is something which i have been talking uh, since long that is this is called as academic integrity and uh, you know our examination system uh, till now have been designed to make sure that students don't cheat uh, and you know i think the focus is not on getting the best out of the student it is on avoiding uh, cheating it's avoiding what do i call as a uh, it's you know differentiating students between grade a b c d and so on so you know the examination system is aligned for a different purpose it's important that faculty members in school in colleges and universities redefine the way they do the assessment in fact i hate the word examination you know uh, examination is used in medical uh, terminology and you know the the real use of examination is when you when you compare something with respect to certain things so you know this is for example if you have been tested for covid 19 that's an examination because you know somebody somebody knows that this is the baseline and i'm comparing this patient's blood report corresponding to the baseline in educational institution when you're testing uh, a student you don't know the baseline the the capacity of a student or anybody for that matter is infinite so there is no baseline so examination itself i think is not a great term uh, maybe we should start using assessment is being used but i think it should be more common to use assessment we we'll have to redesign our assessments you know we we'll have to give more project we we'll have to give more uh, i would say case based uh, uh, you know questions we we'll have to give more opinion based questions and so on and that probably is very very important and we need to teach our students the honor code the the uh, the concept of values and ethics in the examination system that needs to come back so you know the whole examination philosophy will change if our students become responsible so you know this is a uh, i would say <clears throat> a cartoon which you know very nicely depicts the problem that uh, indian system is facing and uh, you know because of the fear of law because of the fear of uh, uh, parents because of many other uh, aspects which comes into the fold you know uh, we our examination system is same for every student of a class you know the idea of examination basically has percolated into the education system for the mass production of trained workers you know which was aligned with the need of the industrial age but you know each you individual is admittedly unique and different in terms of abilities proclivities you know capacity so i think we need to we'll have to test other skills i uh, 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 no and those skills are not getting tested uh, in in this current examination system so i think that's important that we look at uh, you know maybe and i know there are limitations many universities are uh, aligned with say many colleges are aligned with many other universities but universities like lch shivnada kriya op jindal at least they have this flexibility to redesign the way examination happens and i think we should look at uh, examination questions examination methods which tests the adaptability the curiosity the complex communication skills the ability to solve non routine problem you know the critical thinking skills those are the things which we need to now test through a, a you know very well thought through assessment strategy uh, that's my uh, feeling and uh, you know and that's why i say that you know in the 21st century job that we we are all aware of and i think corona will change that in a big way what is important i mean you know, what what is important is you know it depends on the thinking skills it depends on the interpersonal skills you know uh, the way i use my technology you know life skills for example you know and there is less value for rote learning so the future of student will depend on what i call as four c's you know critical thinking communication collaboration and creativity so we'll have to redefine the way we look at exam and collaboration is the key that's the you know need of uh what you call as next generation learners and therefore it is very very important for our system to uh, to get that uh, get that thinking okay so this is the interesting picture it basically shows that you know we are using machine learning and we are training machines to act like humans now we need to think what are we training humans to become 
so we should not teach humans to become machines now by just focusing on rote learning and therefore it is important that we question what we are doing and this is the right time because you know the acceptability of students the acceptability of parents the acceptability of faculties is very high for this thinking now so i would suggest that i think it's it's important that we start thinking on this line uh, and maybe uh, in some time i think entire country will start uh, you know realizing the potential of these changes it's not easy to change anything in education system but i think the time has come to even you know talk about it forcefully okay so just one last point i think it's all thing together it's the mindset which which is extremely important and you know i talk about this which i call as growth mindset versus fixed mindset there is a book uh, by <clears throat> carol dweck you can look at it it's a very very simple concept but i think we as a teacher will have to you know this is a very very good opportunity we are at home we can actually read other things you know spend time on thinking about you know mindset because that's the first step of any revolution you know so i think uh, the growth mindset you know creates a very powerful passion for learning the passion for stretching yourself and sticking to the hallmark you know that's the that's the growth mindset you know this picture demonstrate very nicely uh, that you know that success is not uh, being about your best not being better than others it's it's an opportunity you know covid is an opportunity for us so i think let's let's make use of this as much as we can uh, all right so this is all what i wanted to share with all of you and um, thank you so much uh, i can i can take some questions if you wish you are mute uh, almas yeah thank you very much for the lovely presentation sir so if you have any questions you can drop in your question in q and a box i'll be waiting for the questions okay you can uh, you can read the question if there are any and i can answer i don't see any question i guess okay let me see i can just check uh because there have been questions going on so we have sushma ma'am she wants to ask some question i guess yeah is it is there in the question answer box or is she uh, yeah. uh good afternoon uh, professor yes good afternoon good afternoon so it was interesting hearing your uh, ideas yes um, in fact i've been talking to people and saying the we could never have got a better opportunity than we have today right uh, like uh, in fact uh, i'm a counselor like there are many students who are now you know who had applied abroad and they have decided to stay back in india so we could never have got such a good opportunity to prove to the world that we are as good as them but we cannot prove it just without doing something about it. yes True. so i feel at least the private universities should take this into their hands in a to prove that yes our education system is as good we do not need to run away from here whether it is stanford or whether it's mit uh, you know mit or what why can't we be why can't we, the big universities in our country which are very good yes uh, you know that. i would just add, thank you so much uh, sushma uh, there is see uh, i think couple of universities which came in the last 10 years and i said shivnado university kriya ashoka op jindal ahmedabad these have all been doing phenomenal work but you know the what is I should say i mean you see harvard is close to 300 plus years old university okay the the university setup it takes years to percolate into the mind of people because it's not just about what we do it's about the perception and perception takes a lot of time to build i think these universities have been doing phenomenal work and will continue to do work uh and you know i, I think the there's an advantage with the private university space that is the flexibility and you know our ability to adapt and she changed the way we respond to students need you know i think we are not rigid we are very agile we don't have to follow a predetermined path so i think private universities are probably in the best position to uh, to you know 
overcome this perception problem and i think this covid 19 gives students a chance to experience these new issues i think you know we have a lot of queries from uh, people who otherwise would have gone to uh, these top institutions and we are taking some of them so i think this is the time that they are going to experience uh, these places and i think the perception game will automatically start changing so very valid point and i i thank you Uh, and i'm uh, what i'm looking forward to is not only the private universities i feel the moment the private universities be start becoming so big when i mean big i mean uh, in the quality i'm very sure the government universities you take amdavad university for example it has taken that leap yeah yeah so i'm i'm uh, hoping that this will happen to all our universities in india private and government and uh, we won't need students to go abroad except for maybe just an interest on uh, in tasting something different that's all thank you ma'am thank you for your insight thank you thanks a lot thank you so thank you very much rajiv sir so we are here for a break now we'll take a quick 10 minutes break and we will uh, come back with more excellent speakers with us and we hope that you will join us on time so we are just taking a short 10 minute break and we will be back soon thank you so much thank you sir thank you
I hope uh, everyone had a good break. And we are starting now. So our uh, next speaker, he is a heritage activist and an educationist, uh, better known as the founder of India's uh, largest heritage hobby club, uh, the Heritage Photogra Photography Club and Youth for Heritage Foundation, uh, Mr. Vikram Jeet Singh Ruprai, and he will be discussing role of leaders amidst the technology dominance. So over to you, Vikram Jeet. Thank you, Almas, and thank you, ICA, for having me over. Um, I've been listening to uh, all the sessions since morning, and uh, quite an interactive. Uh, as in, you know, uh, I, I can see how audience is also engaging, and how we are getting all the wonderful uh, information from uh, so many uh, the, the, all the speakers that we had. Uh, the topic मुझे दिया गया है या you कहिए कि one of the topics that I can do just to some extent is uh, talking about technology because before becoming a teacher or a teacher trainer, I was a technology guy. I was working in IT industry for almost 14, 15 years where I designed several solutions. In which some solutions are coming in today's date, we are You know, when teachers have to interact with students, uh, when we have to uh, overnight change things, now that I am also a teacher and a teacher trainer, what I have felt is perhaps we are a little late in, uh, you know, stepping into these new roles that we have been assigned by, I would say nature, uh, uh, because nature plays a bigger role, though there are certain man-made calamities that have influenced it. Uh, we had 60 years, Saat Sal, to change the way we interpreted our entire system, be it education system, be, uh, be it our industry system. And uh, to some extent, everything changed except our education system. So I won't say that um, uh, our, our education system is bad. I would say that the educators in India were so comfortable in what they were doing, they never decided to move into a completely new, different, challenging mode. And that is uh, what I think is, uh, you know, caused some sort of uh, trouble or challenge as soon as the lockdown began. Uh, we log schools ke liye jaise uh, aaj abhi uh, thodi der pehle sir ne bhi kaha tha ki schools mein humne mobile phone to ban kar rakhe hain. No mobile phones at all for kids. Gharon mein bhi we tell them that okay, aapki eyes kharab ho jayenge. Uh, you are not supposed to watch TV, you are not supposed to watch mobile phones or tablets or laptops for extended hours, uh, not good for health. And then all of a sudden, one night a kid wakes up and he hears, Ab sab kuch phone pe hoga. pick up your phone, usi pe tumhari class hogi, usi pe tumhara assignment aega, usi pe tum karke do. Kid is completely confused. All he knew was hold the phone close to his eyes and tuck, 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 play a game. That's it. And now all of a sudden everything has changed. Whereas uh, we could have incorporated this way long ago in a subtle way so that things would have been easier for them now. And it's not that we didn't know that we didn't know that we didn't know that we we didn't know that we we Exactly what is happening around these smart solutions. If you put a screen, the organization that has installed that smart board, they would put up some sort of uh, content over there, koi audio play or video play or and then some content is going on. The teacher stands in the corner, it is going to be a good thing. We can do normal LCD screen, we don't need to use a smart board. In certain cases, teachers pull up content, they use those stylus, they draw over the content. A lot of good things happen in those regard, in that way. But in that case also, children are only allowed to watch what is going on that board. 
जो वो पहले चौक से या व्हाइट बोर्ड मार्कर पे एक मार्कर पेन से करते थे काम अब वो एक डिजिटल पेन से कर रहे हैं बट द टेक्निक इज सेम जस्ट द मीडियम स्लाइटली हेज चेंज वेयर एज द इंडस्ट्री इज मूविंग इन अ टोटली डिफरेंट पेस और हमें एक बहुत ही अलग लेवल पर काम करने की जरूरत थी अभी जो सबसे ज्यादा चैलेंजेस हमें फेस करने पड़ रहे हैं विच यू नो ऑफ पेरेंट्स एज वेल एज टीचर्स दे आर कंप्लेनिंग अगेन एंड अगेन द प्रोमिनेंट वन बीइंग द डिजिटल फैटिग नाउ वी ऑल नो बैठ के चार चार पांच पांच घंटे स्क्रीन के आगे वी फील टायर्ड सो व्हेन आई वाज वर्किंग इन आईटी इंडस्ट्री हम लोग 14 से 16 घंटे एट अ स्ट्रेच बैठते थे कई बार बीच में ब्रेक के लिए भी नहीं उठते थे कैफेटेरिया में कॉल कर दिया और खाना टेबल पर ही आ रहा है पूरा पूरा दिन बैठे हुए मेरा वजन जो है वो 140 किलो पार कर गया था क्योंकि कितने कितने महीने मेरा यही होता था सुबह 10 बजे ऑफिस पहुंच जाना रात को दो दो बजे तक ऐसे ही बैठे हुए हैं रात को 10-11 बजे मैकडोनल्ड से या डोमिनोज से खाना आ रहा है पूरा लाइफस्टाइल खराब हो चुका था सो so, पर्सनली मुझे लंबा टाइम स्क्रीन के आगे बैठने की आदत है उसके बावजूद आई टीच इन फ्यू कॉलेज नाउ देट आई बिन टेकिंग दीज क्लासेज इवन आई एम फीलिंग डिजिटल फेटिक नॉट देट आई हैव बिन आउट ऑफ टच फ्रॉम दीज लॉन्ग आवर्स ऑफ सिटिंग Now what I I have have to to do is university classes For four hours I have to continuously speak or three hours I have to continuously speak with five five ten ten minutes break बीच में नहीं हो पा रहा है ये प्रॉब्लम बहुत जानों को आ रही है पहले कुछ प्रॉब्लम लिस्ट आउट करता हूँ टॉक अबाउट यूर सोल्यूशन एनदर प्रॉब्लम दैट पीपल आर फेसिंग इज द इम्पैक्ट लॉट ऑफ पीपल टोल्ड मी हमारे बोलने से क्या हो रहा है इम्पैक्ट थोड़ी हो पा रहा है बच्चों को समझ थोड़ी आ रहा है ठीक है टीचर आ रही है बोलकर चली जा रही है बच्चे तो नहीं पढ़ पा रहे देन मेनी पीपल आल्सो केम टू मी सेइंग सर देयर इज अ मेजर इश्यू ऑफ साइबर सिक्योरिटी सो आई वाज कंडक्टिंग माय क्लासेस वाया जूम एंड पीपल वर लाइक नो नो डोंट यू वॉच न्यूज न्यूज में भी आ रहा है सोशल मीडिया व्हाट्सएप पे आ रहा है व्हाट्सएप यूनिवर्सिटी ने बोल दिया फिर तो वैसे भी पत्थर पे लकीर है ना हम उसके आगे तो कुछ मानते ही नहीं आज की डेट में WhatsApp पे आ गया कि Zoom is not a thing. Uh, this Zoom has got security issues, and I was like, guys, have you even read into it? What kind of security issues are there? Uh, there are certain measures that this organization has taken Zoom. If you implement them, you uh, you know adjust your settings properly, there will there will be no problem. Now, having said that, the last uh, session that I did was uh, with a person from Rome. Uh, who is a heritage expert a big time he is into disaster management one mistake i did i gave i gave that link publicly on twitter and facebook so that everybody could join because he's a popular guy everybody wanted to join some anti social elements joined and in between for almost 10 15 minutes it was a horrible chaos where some random people were abusing and what not now a person like me who knows or i should say who claims to know everything about technology Who is like, "Hey, cyber security. Let me handle it. Let me do it." Even I fell into that trap. Anybody can. Our teachers are most vulnerable. That's a fact. We we cannot deny that. Uh, technology penetration. सबके पास फोन है भी के नहीं. Laptop है भी के नहीं. Assignments आ रहे हैं. So in, in, even in my case, I've got kids. Uh, उनके assignments school से आते हैं WhatsApp पे. I have to print them out. I've just got. आज का lot printed. पूरा. ये उनका holiday homework पूरा आ चुका है मेरे पास. So I've printed. about 30 sheets which i have to give to them they'll fill it we'll either scan it or click it and then we'll send it to the teacher is this the right way to do it we had such a wonderful session on liberal arts i've been teaching liberal arts in uh, in two universities i have been advocating liberal arts uh, in all my teacher training sessions wherever i go across india and one thing i feel is that we have not even understood as in uh, teachers and even students they don't even understand the concept of liberal arts we don't need to do all this stuff if we just understand what exactly it is and given these days of technology if we can only blend our uh, proper interdisciplinary project based learning techniques and the liberal art techniques with technology things will change drastically parents ka interference ek bahut bada factor hai aaj ke date mein uh those all the all the teachers and uh, school heads who are right now attending to this session they would agree to me class chal rahi hoti hai piche se kahin se ekdam se koi parent nikal ke aata hai ya back of your mind you know ki is phone ke is laptop ke dusri side pe piche aise kaan karke ek parent baitha hua jo puri baat sun raha hai 
एंड प्रोबेबली बीच बीच में इधर उधर टेक्सटिंग भी कर रहा है आपस में व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप्स बने हुए पेरेंट्स के वहां टेक्सटिंग चल रही है इट एक्चुअली हैपन इन माई डॉटर्स क्लास वॉज लर्निंग समथिंग टीचर वॉज टीचिंग एंड ऑल ऑफ अ सडन वट हैपन्स इज मेरी वाइफ के फोन पर दे हैव देयर ऑल द मदर्स हैव देयर व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप मेरी वाइफ के फोन पर मैसेज आने शुरू हो जाते हैं ये टीचर ये क्या पढ़ा रही है ऐसे क्यों बोल रही है वैसे ही द क्रिपिंग स्टार्टेड टीचर वाज हैविंग सम टेक्निकल इशू एट हर एंड और वहां पर वो प्रॉब्लम स्टार्ट हो गई अह एक केस मेरे साथ भी हुआ ऐसा अगेन व्हेन माय डॉटर वाज लर्निंग आई वाज सिटिंग इन दैट रूम टीचर यूज्ड एन एग्जांपल व्हिच वाज नॉट अप्रोप्रिएट वेरी इनअप्रोप्रिएट एग्जांपल टीचर शुड नॉट हैव डन दैट बट अनफॉर्चूनेटली टीचर डिड Now instead of uh, uh, going to the teacher and telling her ki aap aise kyu kar rahe ho ya aapne ye kyu bola I thought it is not fair and I know that nobody from her school or those teachers are connected to me via social media so maine facebook par jaake post kiya ki this is what has happened without using any names or anything what do you think and we started in discussion we started discussion on social media now if that teacher actually comes and reads that to use kitna bura lagega main janta hu wo theek nahi hoga however kyunki unki galti thi मैं डायरेक्टली बोलना भी नहीं चाहता था बहुत सारे इश्यूज थे इवन आई वाज स्ट्रगलिंग विद दैट सो नाउ पेरेंट्स आर फीलिंग कि हमें टीचर से ज्यादा पता है हाउ एवर व्हाट पेरेंट्स डोंट नो इज कि टीचर इज नॉट एड्रेसिंग वन चाइल्ड टीचर इज एड्रेसिंग थर्टी टू फोर्टी किड्स सबका अंडरस्टैंडिंग लेवल अलग अलग है हो सकता है वो एग्जाम्पल एक पेरेंट ए, एक बच्चे के लिए ठीक हो और दूसरे बच्चे के लिए ठीक ना हो नाउ in a classroom it's very easy because uh, the moment you use an example and you see the reaction on the face of a child you are able to justify your example or you are able to handle the situation over there online classes mein kya ho raha hai you can't see all those faces even if their cameras are on so in one of the universities where i teach i have got 300 students in my class normally over there i teach in an auditorium yahan par all those 300 kids they join on that uh, uh, we use microsoft teams they join and even if they all switch on their cameras i cannot see more than 9 or 12 uh, faces in one go so mujhe nahi pata hai ki baki 300 bacche 200 bacche kya samajh pa rahe hain that is a big challenge uh, background noise bahut hoti hai background interference i don't know agar aap mein se kisi ne abhi notice kiya ki nahi but while i am speaking piche se sabzi wale ki awaaz aa rahi hai because my uh, office cable is right on the street bahar street hai and these people have to make their living unhe gali ke bahar to nahi rok sakta टीचर्स के साथ भी ये प्रॉब्लम आ रही है चैलेंज आ रहे हैं बच्चे म्यूट पे जा सकते हैं टीचर म्यूट पे नहीं जा सकते एंड द मोमेंट दिस समथिंग ऑफ दिस सॉर्ट हैपेंस सो वन इन वन ऑफ माय क्लासेस आई वाज टीचिंग पीछे से ऐसी कोई आवाज आई किड्स दे जस्ट वेंट बिजर्क और कमेंट्स आने शुरू हो गए चैट में लिखना शुरू किया सर ये क्या हो रहा है पीछे से आवाजें क्या आ रही है कॉलेज किड्स से उन्होंने मस्ती करनी शुरू कर दी हमारे बहुत सारे टीचर्स जो है वो इस चीज को हैंडल नहीं कर पा रहे हैं दिस आई हैव सीन बिकॉज़ यू नो व्हेन दे कम टू मी फॉर काउंसलिंग हाउ टू हैंडल टेक्नोलॉजी एंड दैट तो उसमें ये प्रॉब्लम्स उनको फेस करनी पड़ रही हैं ई बुलिंग जो मैंने अभी मेंशन किया ई बुलिंग इज आल्सो हैपनिंग वेयर किड्स आर बुलिंग ईच अदर सो इन वन ऑफ माय क्लासेस व्हाट हैपेंड स्टूडेंट्स थॉट दैट द टीचर इज नॉट देयर सर ने अभी ज्वाइन नहीं किया एंड बॉयज स्टार्टिंग हैविंग फन विद ईच अदर और दे स्टार्टेड यूजिंग अब्यूसिव लैंग्वेज usually the way they do in their class they were not aware that recording is on and i was also there just that i since i was on mute and my camera was off to samne mera naam dikh nahi raha tha unhone bhi notice nahi kiya hoga kaun se connected the ultimately wo jo teen char bacche aapas mein masti kar rahe the un sabhi ko lockdown start hone ke hafte 10 din ke andar andar investigate kar diya gaya this is the early jab sirf schools ka lockdown hua tha main tab ki baat kar raha hu hamari online classes tabhi shuru ho gayi thi eventually hua kya उनका ये पूरा टाइम वो सफर कर रहे हैं और अब एग्जाम्स आने वाले हैं एंड दे वर नॉट एबल टू अटेंड एनी क्लास उसके बाद जो मस्ती बच्चे स्कूल लेवल में अपने पर्सनल सर्कल uh, में कर रहे हैं अब वो एकदम से सामने निकल के आ रही हैं और इन, उनको रेस्टिगेट करना इसलिए जरूरी था क्योंकि जितने और बच्चे ज्वाइन कर चुके थे सेशन में उनके कई के पेरेंट्स जो वहां बैठे हुए थे पेरेंट्स वुड हैव कम आफ्टर दॉलेज हाउ डू यू अलाउ दिस सिमिलरली वेन आई एम डूइंग माई सेशन विद स्कूल आई कैन सी पेरेंट्स बीच में अपने स्क्रीन कैमरा में एकदम उनका फेस आएगा और ऐसे गुस्से से देख रहे होंगे कि ये क्या पढ़ा रहे हो ये क्या बता रहे हो वो रिएक्शंस वो सामने स्क्रीन पर देने लग गए हैं तो ऑल दीज थिंग्स आर हैपनिंग हाउ टू कम आउट ऑफ इट हाउ टू हैंडल दिस लेट मी स्टार्ट विद वन थिंग व्हिच इज द स्क्रीन टाइम एंड डिजिटल फटीक ड्यू टू दैट इंपैक्ट ऑन आवर हेल्थ आईज मसल्स ऑफ द बॉडी इन सब चीजों के ऊपर 
बच्चों से आप स्क्रीन टाइम नहीं ले सकते पहले तो ये एक्सेप्ट कर लेते हैं वाई एम सेंग दिस इज दिस दिस माइट साउंड हार्श टू मेनी इयर्स बट वाई एम सेंग दिस इज दीज किड्स द करंट जनरेशन इज टेक्नोलॉजी नेटिव वी गाइज आर टेक्नोलॉजी माइग्रेंट्स माई पेरेंट्स प्रोबेबली आर टेक्नोलॉजी रिफ्यूजीज जो आ रहे हैं जो कोशिश कर रहे हैं ज्वाइन करने की बट अभी भी हैंडल नहीं कर पा रहे हैं मैंने जब इंडिया में फोन आने शुरू हुए मैं तब से फोन यूज कर रहा हूँ मेरे डैड के पास था जब लैपटॉप पहला बना मेरे पास तब से लैपटॉप है कंप्यूटर में यूज कर रहा हूँ मैं डॉस पे काम करता था करते करते मैं विंडोज टेन तक आ चुका हूँ कई सर्वर पे लाइनिक सर्टिफिकेशन की सो आई बीन इन टू टेक्नोलॉजी अलॉट स्टिल आई फील माई किड्स के ऑपरेट अ फोन बेटर देन मी डिजाइन मोबाइल सोल्यूशन फॉर मेनी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन स्टिल देर एट टाइम्स यू नो they can handle it better why because they have their raw mind and we guys are distracted with so many things and when we try to do something we have to just focus on one particular element ki mujhe abhi apna mic mute unmute karna seekhna hai main utna karke wahan se hat jaunga bacche kya karenge khali baithe wo sare buttons dabake ke dekh lenge unko pata chal jayega kya hota hai kya nahi hota my kids are able to handle my son is in first class my daughter is in fifth and they are able to handle their online classes much better than i handle my sessions You know, at that that young age, my daughter knows kab camera off karke letna hai, kab masti marni hai. Beech -beech mein kya karna hai? chat se kaise ma'am ko reply karna, kaun pehle karega, kaun baad mein karega. Mujhe bhi ek minute ke liye sochna padta hai. Aap, do you want to deprive your kids of this whole thing when you know that after five years, ten years, this is the only thing that can save their life? इंडस्ट्री में जब वो मार्केट में जाएंगे जॉब के लिए या अपना बिजनेस करने के लिए दे विल नीड टेक्नोलॉजी एंड इफ यू डू नॉट मेक देम हैबिचुअल ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी राइट नाउ उनको आगे चल के बहुत ज्यादा प्रॉब्लम होने वाली है सेकंड थिंग आंखों पे क्या असर होगा बॉडी पे क्या असर होगा बिल्कुल खराब असर होगा बट अंडरस्टैंड द डिफरेंस बिटवीन सी मॉनिटर्स एंड टी एफ एंड एल दिस इज पहले जो हमारे बड़े बड़े टीवी हुआ करते थे कैथोडरे ट्यूब जिसमें फॉस्फोरस की कोटिंग होती थी उससे जो गामा रेडिएशन निकलती थी वो हमारी आंखों पे ज्यादा असर करती थी आज की डेट में वी हैव एलसीडी स्क्रीन वी हैव टीएफटी स्क्रीन्स वेयर वी कैन कंट्रोल ब्राइटनेस कंट्रास्ट एट अ डिफरेंट लेवल वेयर वी देयर आर मेनी अदर थिंग्स अवेलेबल जिससे आपकी आईज पर स्ट्रेन ना पड़े आपके फोन्स में आपके लैपटॉप्स में हर ऐप के अंदर नाइट मोड अवेलेबल है डार्क स्क्रीन्स अवेलेबल है जिससे आपकी आंखों पे ज्यादा असर नहीं पड़ेगा दोस थिंग्स कैन बी यूटिलाइज्ड सेकंड थिंग हाउ डू यू सेट your posture your ergonomics is very important now that i'm sitting my camera is far away i've got a table jahan pe meri puri arm rest kar rahi hai i've got a separate keyboard i don't write on my laptop so i've got a laptop i've got a separate screen jis par sara mere question answers aur aapke comments mere ek taraf aa rahe hain aur samne camera mere ek taraf chal raha hai why i'm using this i'm not saying everybody has to do this i'm just giving an example why i use a separate keyboard because uh, i developed carpal tunnel syndrome so at the edge i cannot keep my wrist at the edge i need a proper rest yahan par pure mein kuch table ka rest chahiye so main apne liye itni space bana ke rakhta hu taki meri body pe wo effect na blood circulation kahi pe stop na ho bahut sari aisi choti choti cheeze hain how do you sit aapki chair kitni unchi honi chahiye chair ki back kitni honi chahiye mere specially back aise rakhiye ki mere head ko rest mil sake every single thing needs to be kept in mind uh when you are giving your child a mobile phone or even when they are watching tv how they are sitting uh, at what angle the screen is all these things make difference so instead of snatching away the phone because in our schools at at homes what we do we take away the device why because we think it is convenient for us hame pata hai bacche ki sehat kharab ho sakti hai uska solution kya hai sahi tarike se istemal karna nahi batayenge bas cheen lenge ki istemal karna hi nahi hai which will create A bigger problem down the line in future. So please, आप उससे device छीनिए मत. Let the child use the device, but in a proper way. How to sit? How to uh, interact? How to chat? Thumbs कैसे use करने हैं? कितने time तक use करने हैं? Finger से tap करना है? क्या करना है? All these things can be done. So uh, earlier I had a very small laptop which my kids were using. एक पुराना बड़ा लैपटॉप पड़ा हुआ था लॉकडाउन के टाइम पे मैंने उनको वो दिया बिकॉज मुझे पता है कि नाउ दे हैव टू स्पेंड वन टू टू आवर्स ऑन स्क्रीन एंड स्मॉल लैपटॉप इज स्मॉल कीबोर्ड हाथ ऐसे करके टाइप करना पड़ेगा इट्स नॉट गुड फॉर देयर हेल्थ फिजिकल एक्सरसाइज खत्म हो चुकी है बिकॉज दे आर कन्फाइंड विद इन देयर होम्स सबके घर बहुत बड़े बड़े लग्जरी होम्स नहीं है छोटे छोटे एक कमरे से दूसरे कमरे तक मैक्सिमम जा पाते हैं सो देन वट आई डेड I did certain activities जिसमें एक रूम में कुछ आइटम रख दी एक रूम में कुछ आइटम रख दी व्हाइट बोर्ड और ब्लैक बोर्ड मेरे पास थे वो मैंने 
रूम्स में हर रूम में लगा रखे और कुछ दीवारों के ऊपर मैं एक्टिविटीज करवाता हूँ अपने बच्चों से तो उनको बोला कि भाग भाग कर अपने वो काम करना है तो अब एक रूम से दूसरे रूम में भाग रहे हैं कुछ एंगेज उनके साथ करना पड़ा तब जाके उनका वो जो ब्लड सर्कुलेशन है बॉडी का वो हुआ सो इफ दे आर सिटिंग ऑन डिवाइस फॉर लेट्स से थर्टी मिनट्स और फोर्टी मिनट्स आई मेक श्योर एटलीस्ट आफ्टर वन आवर दे नीड अ टेन मिनट्स ब्रेक बच्चों को एक घंटे से ज्यादा लगातार एक पोजिशन में मत बैठने दीजिए वो ठीक नहीं होगा चाहे वो आप स्कूल में बैठा रहे हैं चाहे आप यहाँ बैठा रहे हैं स्कूल में जब ब्रेक होती है पीरियड चेंज होता है किड्स कैन गेट अप सिट डाउन थोड़ा सा मूवमेंट हो जाता है यहाँ ऑनलाइन क्लासेस में दे हैव टू सिट लाइक दिस सामने और वो हिल भी नहीं पा रहे हैं दैट नीड्स टू चेंज सो आई डोंट हैव दैट मच टाइम टू एक्सप्लेन ऑल दी पॉइंट अर्गोनॉमिक्स सो इन शॉर्ट आई वुड से इज प्लीज गो एड ऑनलाइन सर्च करिए वट इज द राइट पॉस्चर स्क्रीन साइज के हिसाब से डिस्टेंस क्या होना चाहिए एक सिंपल लॉजिक बता देता हूँ वेन यू आर सिटिंग यू शुड नॉट बी एबल टू टच योर स्क्रीन सो आई एम पुटिंग माई हैंड इन फ्रंट ऑफ द कैमरा एंड यू कैन सी देर इज वन हैंड गैप बिटवीन my arm and my hand and the camera or the screen my meri dusri screen bhi mujhse kafi dur hai if you are not able to touch your screen that's a good sign the screen should be at eye level so i had i use a i use a platform jisse main isko thoda upar karke rakhta hu so that eye level par aa jaye taki mujhe aise na karna pade mujhe aise na karna pade yahan meri nerves na wo ho ye sari cheeze hame school mein bachcho ko saath ke saath sikhani chahiye thi humne nahi sikhai koi baat nahi ab sikha dete hain moreover teachers for decades and decades our education system went through a particular style and all our teachers or and their teachers jahan se wo seekh ke aaye wo ek particular tarike se cheeze seekh ke aa gaye and now they think it's it's not they think think but it's something that has been embedded into us that this is the right way of teaching kyunki humne bhi aise seekha hai hamare teachers ne bhi aise seekha tha unke mentors ne bhi aise seekha tha hum aise padha sakte hain ye best hai our current teaching system is only for our convenience as a teacher बच्चे के वो काम आ रहा है कि नहीं हम बहुत ज्यादा नहीं सोच पाते क्योंकि हमारे पास उतना स्कोप ही नहीं है टाइम टेबल खत्म करना है हमें ये भी करना है हमें वो भी करना है अब सब धरा का धरा रह गया है अब नहीं हो पा रहे अपने टाइम टेबल्स पूरे सिलेबस पूरा नहीं हो पा रहा है सब कुछ पीछे चल रहा है और मान लीजिए आपने कर भी लिया पूरा जस्ट इमेजिन जितने हमारे पास स्कूल है जो गवर्नमेंट एडेड है या गवर्नमेंट स्कूल है वहां पर तो बच्चों के पास इतने एडवांस टेक्नोलॉजीज नहीं है वो लोग वहां पे टीचर्स के पास अच्छे फोन्स नहीं है दे आर नॉट एबल टू डू ऑल दीज से अल्टीमेटली होगा क्या इन अप्रैल 2021 व्हेन एंटायर इंडिया ऑल दी स्टूडेंट्स विल सिट इन द एग्जामिनेशन रफली 16 60 परसेंट साठ सत्तर परसेंट के करीब बच्चे ऐसे होंगे जिन्होंने पूरा साल कुछ नहीं पढ़ा होगा क्योंकि स्कूल खुलेंगे अगस्त सेप्टेम्बर में जाके और उनके पास दो तीन महीने होंगे सारा सिलेबस खत्म करने को तो जल्दबाजी में करवा दिया जाएगा सो ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन अप्रिल डिजास्टर बहुत सारे बच्चे ऐसे होंगे जो माइग्रेंट लेबर के साथ मूव कर गए एक सिटी से दूसरी सिटी में उनकी पूरे साल की एजुकेशन खराब हो गई है बहुत सारे बच्चे इंडिया में ऐसे हैं जिनके पेरेंट्स को उन बच्चों को स्कूल से निकलवाना पड़ गया है क्योंकि दे कैन नॉट अफोर्ड स्कूल फीस एनी मोर गवर्नमेंट इज सही फीस मत लीजिए पेरेंट्स आर ऑल्सो शाउटिंग हम फीस नहीं देंगे फीस नहीं देंगे जिससे स्कूल को बहुत ज्यादा प्रॉब्लम हो रही है बिकॉज स्कूल है तो टीचर को सैलरी देनी है ना एंड प्लस ऑल दिस टेक्नोलॉजी थिंग दैट एज कम इन द मोमेंट स्कूल ओपन I know a lot of schools will want कि हम लोग अपने यहाँ पर कुछ ऐसे इनिशियटिव लें कि टेक्नोलॉजी को बेटर बनाया जा सके और स्ट्रॉन्ग बनाया जा सके बट गिवन दिस सीनारियो फंड एक बहुत मेजर इश्यू बनने वाला है जिन स्कूल के पास बैकिंग है सम सॉर्ट ऑफ फाउंडेशन और एन जी ओ समिंग विच इज सपोर्टिंग स्कूल उस केस में क्या होगा स्कूल के पास पैसा होगा वो इम्प्लीमेंट कर लेंगे ऑल दो बिग स्कूल छोटे स्कूलों को अपने आप को सरवाइव करने के लिए उनको मैच करना पड़ेगा वी नो दैट वी गेट इनटू रैट रेस वी डिनाइट और वी एक्सेप्ट इट बट वी सी कि वो हो रहा है कि उन्होंने स्मार्ट बोर्ड लगाया मुझे भी लगा लेना चाहिए उन्होंने ऐसे झूले लगाए मुझे भी लगाने चाहिए पेरेंट्स तभी आएंगे मेरे स्कूल में वो एक फैक्टर है तो जब नए नए टूल्स एंड टेक्नोलॉजी आ जाएंगी क्लास के अंदर देखिए इमीजिएटली लॉकडाउन के बाद वो चीजें शुरू होंगी सब स्कूलों के ऊपर एक प्रेशर होगा कि आप भी वो इम्प्लीमेंट करिए बट फंड नहीं होंगे that is another thing that will shake this entire industry create a big split so what can we do now as a school leader more specifically for teachers you have to upgrade yourself there is no other solution and you have to do it on your own don't uh, wait for uh, the school management to come and provide you training not every school can do that because already cash crunch chal raha hai hamari salaries nikal pa rahi hai yahi bahut badi baat hai school management ko kya karna chahiye yes Cash crunch and all is there. Uh, 
माई फर्स्ट रिकमेंडेशन इज की प्लीज ट्रेनिंग के बारे में सोच लीजिए इफ यू कैन ट्रेन योर टीचर्स सेकेंडली ट्राई टू अलाउ डिवाइसिस इन टू द्लास रूम इंस्टेड ऑफ स्टॉपिंग स्टूडेंट्स फ्रॉम यूजिंग द डिवाइस वॉट वी कैन डू इज वी कैन एनकरेज दैम टू यूज इट वाइजली सो इन वन ऑफ द स्कूल वेयर आई टीच एवरी चाइल्ड नीड्स टू हैव द लैपटॉप ऑन देयर डेस्क वेन आई एम टीचिंग सो दे हैव गॉट मोबाइल लैब्स तो लैब हम लोग ट्रॉली है वो खींच कर ले आते हैं और जिस क्लास में लैपटॉप तो दे डोंट है कंप्यूटर लैब दे हैव अ मोबाइल लैब जो मोबाइल मूव करते हैं तो सारे लैपटॉप उसमें पड़े हुए हैं जिस क्लास में चाहिए होता है वो ट्रॉली खींच के वहां ले जाते हैं लैपटॉप सबके डेस्क पे रख देते हैं सो इन माई क्लास आई ऑलवेज गेट दैट एंड वट आई डू इज आई स्टार्ट टॉकिंग टू किड्स और मैं उनसे बात करते करते ऐसी ऐसी चीजें बोल जाता हूँ जो उनके करिकुलम से जिसका कोई लेना देना नहीं है किताब में उनको नहीं मिलेंगी एंड दे हैव टू क्विकली सर्च एंड गिव द रिस्पॉन्स मुझसे बात करने के लिए एंड देन आई एनकरेज दैम कि मुझे चैलेंज करो मैं बीच बीच में गलत बातें बोल जाता हूँ जानबूझकर कि ये मैंने इस पूरे आज के पिछले 20 मिनट में कुछ गलत बोला है नाउ चैलेंज मी नाउ टेल मी व्हाट इज राइट सो एवरीबडी गेट्स ऑन टू दैट सो इंस्टेड ऑफ कीपिंग वन कंप्यूटर पीरियड लेट्स फिगर आउट अ वे हाउ वी कैन इनकॉर्पोरेट टेक्नोलॉजी इन इट आप हर बच्चे को लैपटॉप नहीं प्रोवाइड कर सकते लेकिन बहुत सारे बच्चे सर्टन क्लासेस में भी टेंथ ट्वेल्थ यू कैन गेट दैम टू ब्रिंग दियर ओन डिवाइस इफ वी कैन फिगर आउट सम सॉर्ट ऑफ सोल्यूशन बच्चे कुछ और काम करने लग जाएंगे चैटिंग करने लग जाएंगे मस्ती करने लग जाएंगे बिल्कुल करेंगे बिल्कुल करेंगे एंड दैट इज वेयर वी गाइज नीड टू गेट अप बोल अप आर सॉक्स एंड फिगर आउट अ वे कि उसको कैसे सॉल्व किया जाए केस टू केस वेरी करेगा कहीं पर आप क्लास बहुत इंटरेस्टिंग है तो बच्चे ऐसा कोई काम नहीं करेंगे जहां क्लास बोरिंग है आप उनको डराकर जबरदस्ती रूल्स बनाकर आप कुछ नहीं रोक पाओगे अब ये कर सकते हो कि वहां पर अब जैमर्स लगा दो ऑल अदर सिग्नल्स आर जैम बट यू स्टिल हैव योर वाईफाई थ्रू विच यू आर कनेक्टेड विच इज राउटेड थ्रू ऑफिस का नेटवर्क स्कूल का और सिर्फ उस स्कूल नेटवर्क के थ्रू जो साइट्स अलाउड हैं वही देख पा रहे हो बहुत सारी चीजें अवेलेबल हैं सब कुछ हो सकता है यू नीड टू गेट इन टू दैट बहरहाल लेट मी डू वन थिंग आई हैव लिस्टेड सम प्रॉब्लम some basic solutions that can be implemented how about uh, uh, we open the floor for feedback and for questions maybe you guys can uh, share your views or ask question and i can answer if there is anything specific thank you uh, vikram ji definitely we can uh, take the questions now very uh, interesting facts that you have shared uh, there is mr satendra malik he wants to ask something sure yeah mr satendra you can ask your question you have to unmute yourself sir yes mr satendra malik you can ask your question can you hear us sir you can ask your question can go, go on to our next question so this is from uh, mr praveen choudhary he says uh, students taking screenshots of teachers video and uploading it on social media teachers are not allowed to switch off their cameras as well as unknown students entering in the classes with the names of the particular class students name it's difficult to keep a record of all these things along with the attendance of the students please guide sir my counter question why do you need attendance बच्चा आ रहा है नहीं आ रहा उसका भाई पढ़ के जा रहा है उसका पड़ोसी पढ़ के जा रहा है इट्स फाइन यू आर हेयर टू स्प्रेड नॉलेज लेट्स डू दैट अगेन द फर्स्ट थिंग इज दैट वी नीड टू चेंज द वे वी थिंक आर एग्जामिनेशन सिस्टम द अटेंडेंस सिस्टम द यूनिफॉर्म सिस्टम एक पर्टिकुलर रोज में बैठना इतने बजे उठना इतने बजे बैठना ऑल दिस द वे वी थिंक हैज टू चेंज ओनली देन वी कैन एंटर इन दिस न्यू डोमेन विच वी नाउ हैव स्टार्टेड कॉलिंग द न्यू नॉर्मल सो अटेंडेंस को मैं अभी के लिए साइड पे कर देता हूँ बिकॉज आई डोंट थिंक अटेंडेंस इज इम्पॉर्टेंट एट ऑल बिकॉज इट इज दैट चाइल्ड लॉस इफ द वे यू आर टीचिंग द वे यू आर एक्सप्रेसिंग इज इंटरेस्टिंग एन अप वो बच्चा कभी भी अपनी प्रॉक्सी लगने ही नहीं देगा वो खुद हमेशा आकर बैठेगा नाउ टेकिंग स्क्रीन शॉट अपलोडिंग इट ऑनलाइन ये मेनी टीचर्स फील अनकंफर्टेबल एंड इट इज नॉट जस्ट दैट देर आर सर्टन साइबर क्रिमिनल एक्टिविटीज दैट आर है बॉयज लॉकर रूम के बारे में आप ज्यादातर लोग जानते ही होंगे 
now just imagine that you have given access to the photographs and videos of uh, because you know in many classes we encourage ki bacche bhi apne cameras on kare sometimes in my class also i've said ki ek do mahine se padha raha hu sirf blank screen rehti hai with names written mujhe nahi pata bacche piche baith ke kya kar rahe hai to please 5 minute ke liye apne cameras on karo so i can see who's there and who's not sare bacche on kar lete hain someone has recording mode on wo utna clip karega kahi pe morph karega uska kuch bhi wo kar sakta hai yes those problems are there and we have there will be there are cyber laws and we will be updating those cyber laws in coming future however what is most important is ki hum jo ek moral level hai apne bachcho ka pehle to wo upar kare parents ko isme involve hona padega jiske liye jaise aruna ma'am ne morning mein kaha parents ki counseling bahut zaruri hai so this thing that you and i are discussing we don't have to discuss we are facing this parents need to understand dekhi aapka bachcha kya kar raha hai is it ethically right or not so maybe we can organize a parent counseling session where all these problems that teachers are facing teachers kamre mein apne baithte har ek teacher koi aise nahi hai ki koi bahut decorated office bana kar baithi ho kisi ke piche se baki ke family members nikal rahe hain kyunki unke paas wahi space hai kisi ke wahan kuch chal raha hai kisi ke kuch chal raha hai aur bachche uska mazak banate hain social media pe instagram snapchat wherever they go they do it now to respect the teacher ye cheez स्कूल प्रिंसिपल नहीं सिखा सकता ये चीज फादर और मदर बेटर सिखा सकते हैं इज व्हाट आई हैव रियलाइज्ड सो यस वी आल्सो नीड टू एजुकेट पेरेंट्स एंड राइट नाउ वी हैव अ वेरी गुड चैनल बिकॉज जब बच्चे का कैमरा और माइक ऑन होता है तो पेरेंट आसपास होवर कर रहा होता है वो हेलीकॉप्टर की तरह ऊपर होता है हमें दिखे ना दिखे यू कैन एक्चुअली यू कैन टेल द चाइल्ड बेटर इफ योर पेरेंट इज नियर बाय पांच मिनट के लिए पेरेंट्स को मैसेज कर सकते हैं कि पहले पांच मिनट प्लीज सारे पेरेंट्स पास में रहिएगा वी वॉन्ट टू से समथिंग विच इज ऑल्सो फॉर यू बच्चों की प्रेजेंस में उन्हें भी बताइए दैट वुड बी बेटर थैंक यू विक्रम जी सो इफ वी हैव मोर क्वेश्चंस फॉर विक्रम सर यू कैन ड्रॉप इन योर क्वेश्चंस इन क्यू एंड ए बॉक्स एंड ही विल डेफिनेटली आंसर दोस आई होप एंड नाउ मूविंग ऑन टू आवर नेक्स्ट स्पीकर शी इज अ सीनियर रिक्रूटमेंट एडवाइजर फ्रॉम ट्रिनिटी कॉलेज डब्लिन मिस नीलांजना शेन एंड शी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट the learning science in a research driven environment the lunch na ma'am over to you thank you mas i hope i am audible good afternoon everyone i am delighted to be here today and i'm also humbled to be sharing this platform with so many distinguished experts thank you ica for this very relevant event which has been extremely productive for me personally and i'm sure i will learn even more as we progress through i would like to start by saying what we all know so well already that the current situation with covid-19 is absolutely unprecedented it is testing it is unpredictable and it is very fluid for everyone at a global scale but one thing or one learning that this pandemic has brought and which applies equally to everyone but especially to students and teachers and professionals is to expect and to be as prepared as possible for the unexpected and the best way to do this is through innovation and research at trinity these attributes are inherent to our way of education whether it is teaching or learning today i will be talking about learning science at trinity which offers a unique research driven environment <laughs> so i'll be telling you more about trinity and provide a brief overview of what arlen as a country offers to international students arlen is a small country both in size and population it is among the top 15 safest countries in the world and is hence a friendly and welcoming destination for international students with brexit it is now the only english speaking country in the eu and it offers a one year stay back or job search visa for students who complete a bachelor degree and two years to those who do a master degree this slide presents the economic climate in climate in ireland which is the fastest growing economy in europe due to the presence of over 1200 leading global companies a majority of them have their european headquarters in ireland ict financial services medical tech and biopharma are the key sectors but since today we are focusing on learning science i will give you a quick peek about pharma and medical tech sectors 
presence of over 300 biotech, pharma, and biopharma companies make Ireland the top European country for international pharmaceutical investment. These include Johnson & Johnson, GlaxoSmithKline, Novartis, Abbott, Bayer, and many more. Ireland is also the producer of six out of 10 top-selling drugs in the world. In addition to this, eight of the world's 10 largest medical device companies are also located in Ireland. These include Becton Dickinson, Boston Scientific, Guidant, Medtronic, and Stryker. The sector employs over 29,000 people in Ireland, and it is the second largest employer of medtech professionals in Europe. Majority of these companies also have their dedicated R&D facilities, and it is indeed the strong presence of these sectors that has pushed Ireland into prominence for its response to COVID-19. We are indeed ranked sixth in the world among countries that have responded best to the pandemic through innovative solutions. Coming now to Trinity, which is one of the seven ancient universities of the world, along with Oxford and Cambridge. And these seven universities are ancient because they are all more than 400 years old. What this means for our students is that they are educated at an institution which has centuries of experience of designing education and delivering education. This is really what sets our students apart from other graduates. Trinity has actively built on its tradition of academic excellence and in our 428th year, we are ranked 108th in the world and we are also the only Irish university to be part of the prestigious LERU, which is the League of European Research Universities. And we are ranked 92nd in the world for employability of our graduates. Our researchers are constantly making new and exciting discoveries, which are published in our Research Matters publication. The research that our academics are undertaking is very current. For example, last month, Trinity and AIB announced a collaboration project to establish a research center in Trinity College to accelerate Trinity's immunology project, tackling the COVID-19 pandemic. Over 2.4 million in funding has already been committed towards this project, and it is being led by Professor Kingston Mills. Trinity has five major research institutes and also has research centers. I will show these on the next slide, which is this. Here you can see that four out of our five research institutes are dedicated to different fields of science. This slide tells you about the three SFI uh, centers in which Trinity is the lead partner. These are ADAPT, CONNECT, and AMBER. SFI stands for Science Foundation Ireland. You can see here the large level of funding brought into these centers for research. In addition to working in research centers, Trinity also works at a thematic level. The themes reflect topics of key concern for the university. There are currently 19 research themes, including many with the science aspect, five of which are represented by the images on this slide, which are nanoscience, neuroscience, smart and sustainable planet. We have immunology, inflammation and infection, and genes and society. Two of our alums in science have won Nobel Prizes. In 1951, Ernest Walton won the Nobel Prize in Physics. And just five years ago, in 2015, Professor William Campbell won the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine. Professor Campbell is also the one who launched our new science undergraduate programs in 2017. Thus, we are proud to say that our programs are the result of the vision of a Nobel laureate. This is the image that sums up an undergraduate science journey at Trinity. Students can enter one of the science streams. We have four, biological and biomedical, chemical sciences, geography and geoscience, or physical science. In the first two years, students focus on a number of core subjects that become the foundations of their latest specialization. And at the end of the second year, students will select what their specialization will be for third and fourth year. In third year, students have the option of taking an elective. I'll talk more about the electives in the next few slides. During the summer months of third year, many of our students seek internships or placements in labs in Ireland or overseas. And in the fourth and final year, they complete a large research component, which is a key requirement of their degree. 
lab and field work is a component of our science degrees and these are at the core of student learning from first year students are introduced to our labs and are assigned a lab partner for each module the labs are led by a professor and supported by demonstrators and lab technicians and lab work contributes to students continued assessment some of our science modules also have field work for example in geography and geoscience field work is undertaken around ireland scotland greece and spain and for some specializations there are optional modules which offer a trip to kenya during the reading week coming now to the electives uh, which are taken in the third year students have the option to take one or two elective modules usually electives are taken outside the student's core discipline for example a genetic student might wish to take an elective in a language here i have listed four of the science related electives for example vaccines friend or foe is particularly topical in our current environment this is a module for students who want to be informed about how vaccines work and why they do not always work if they are safe and what are some of the key ethical issues about vaccines similarly decoding genetics takes students from the basic principles of genetics to the latest revolutionary advances in genomics and how new methods of genome sequencing and gene editing are transforming our understanding of biology leading to advances in medicine in drug development as well as forensic science every student at trinity will have the opportunity to do a capstone project as part of their undergrad degree each year students take 60 credits and the final capstone is a large component of these which accounts for 20 credits it is an independent piece of research led by the student and supported by their supervisor so it is quite similar to a mini thesis and this opportunity also allows many of our students to pursue phd directly after their undergrad degree without the need for doing a masters one exciting development in trinity i wish to share with you is the extremely ambitious e3 initiative that stands for engineering environment and emerging technologies it is a multi million euros initiative which is the first of its kind in the history of ireland and among the first internationally e3 aims to revolutionize education by integrating engineering technology and scientific expertise in order to efficiently address some of the grand challenges that the world faces just as the one that we are facing and dealing with now so e3 provides a multidisciplinary approach to prepare a new set of graduates to lead the technology driven ecosystem of the future state of the art world class learning facilities innovative research and industry collaborations are the key drivers of e3 we aim to increase students on our stem related programs by 59% over the next 10 years and we have state of the art facilities like the learning foundry which is built as a living lab with collaborative and active learning spaces digital media lab and research and innovation spaces our new facilities are due to be ready by 2021 so the cohort of engineering and science students that are going to join us this year will be spending 2 years of their programs at the e3 learning foundry also under the e3 initiative we have funds worth 500000 euros where we are offering scholarships worth 5000 euros across every year of those programs uh, which fall under the e3 and biological and geosciences falls under e3 so there are scholarships available for it a second recent and exciting development in trinity is expanding partnership with columbia university of new york in 2018 trinity launched a dual ba with our faculty of arts humanities and social sciences and columbia school of general studies this year it has expanded to include two science programs one is neuroscience from our biological and biomedical sciences stream and geosciences students spend their first two years studying in trinity and the final two in columbia university and they get their degrees from both universities in addition students benefit enormously from the outstanding academic and social environments at both institutions and they are able to utilize facilities and supports from both institutions during their whole four years moving now to the most important part where do our graduates go So here I would like to say that the general perception about science related careers specifically in Ireland is that it is limited to pharmaceutical and chemical sectors 
while the pharmaceutical sector indeed uh, is a large employer, science graduates are highly sought after in a wide variety of other industries in Ireland. For example, food and drink, manufacturing, which includes agrochemicals, petrochemicals, toiletries, plastics, paints, polymers. Many science graduates are employed in fields like environmental management, medical research and diagnostic companies, utilities, energy. The range and possibilities are huge after science degrees. Depending on their specialization, some students pursue research and development or lab work in a pharmaceutical company or a medical setting or graduates of zoology or environmental sciences may look for working in environmental protection agencies. And also the current R&D activity in private industry in Ireland is focused on clean and green technologies, life sciences and pharmaceuticals. Additionally, there are opportunities available in quality assurance and control, regulatory affairs, clinical trials, medical writing, as well as scientific publishing. Our entry requirements usually for science related programs are 80% overall with 75% in two science subjects, which could include maths as well. And uh, for IB, it depends on the course that they choose. We also have an English language requirement which could be an IELTS or a TOEFL or a Pearson. We have one intake in September and the applications open on 1st October of the previous year. What we need are predicted scores, personal statements, two letters of recommendation and an evidence of English language. All applications are online through the website, through the course page. We give out conditional offers on the basis of the predicted scores and the LORs. The final scores and English language tests can always come later. These are our tuition fee for humanities related disciplines. It is about 19,000 euros per year. And for lab based engineering, computer science and science programs, it's about 26,000 euros. And the annual living costs are 13,000 euros. For the first year, we guarantee accommodation for all undergrad students in Trinity Halls of Residence. And Lastly, the scholarships that I was mentioning about. So these are the E3 scholarships which are available for this year as well, which are four to 5,000 euros per year for every year of their program at Trinity. And we have over 500,000 euros available. These are all merit-based scholarships and applications are now in the final round, but they are still available. That is it from my end. I hope I, was, I limited myself to the 10 minutes. And any questions, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, uh, Nilanjana. Thank you very much. Yeah. So if you have any questions for uh, Ms. Nilanjana, you can go on. I don't see any questions coming. So you can drop in your questions in Q&A box and she will definitely answer. So I have uh, a very uh, regretful news that uh, Dr. Neeta Bali will not be able to join us today due to some uh, unavoidable circumstance. So we will be moving on to our panel discussion. And uh, we, uh, I would like to invite Ms. Nitana Dua. Uh, she's the head of department career guidance center, Shivnada School. She will be the moderator of this discussion. Ms. Swati Watts, uh, she's the career counselor at uh, Lancers International School, Gurugram. And Ms. Asta Mahajan, and she's the career counselor at DPS Mathura Road. So guys, over to you now. Thank you so much. And you can see a big smile because uh, I'm e-meeting my friends, both Asta and Swati. So we all are smiling today for that. Thank you, Mr. Nazir. And thank you, Ms. Al Ms. Alba, uh, for this wonderful uh, opportunity that ICAE has given us because um, you know it's it's a time where everybody is going through what you say call a difficult pandemic time but let's look at opportunities that one can seek during that time and I think counselors is a very very important role and today in fact I've been in session since morning and uh, you know every session had such wonderful takeaway personally for me and it's been a learning experience I have made my notes and I would uh, want this session to be equally engaging for all of you so uh, here we begin and uh, good wishes to all of us. Uh, parents and students have a lot of questions about what is going to be like for the graduating class of 2020. How should parents uh, prepare for colleges for their own kids, right? 
and due to the recent outbreak of COVID-19, navigating admissions landscape for high school students has been more challenging than ever. College closure and testing cancellations postponements have created questions for students and college counselors alike. So today, ICA he um, you know has invited us and uh, you know and uh, Asta and Swati uh, from you know counseling field and I'm happy to welcome Ms. Swati Watts and Ms. Asta Mahajan. Ms. Swati Watts brings with her 16 years of experience in the field of career counseling, with a master's in psychology and a PG diploma in counseling from NCRD. She's also an IBDP examiner and is currently associated with the Lancers International School. A very warm welcome, Swati. And Ms. Oh, Asta Mahajan has 10 years of experience as a school counselor and life skill coach and has conducted teacher training on inclusive education as a resource person with CBSE, currently associated with DPS Matra Road, my alma mater. So a warm welcome to you, Asta. Um, holding back, I've put together some questions and let's get the best that we can. Uh, so I'm sure, you know, you're looking at um, anxious parents, anxious students, um, should I should I go ahead with the admission offer that I've already received? Should I consider my plan B? Um, you know, and um, should I look at uh, deferring my admission or look? Should I consider a gap year? What, according to you, as experts in the field, would you recommend as the next steps uh, for your students as well as parents who are currently the graduating class of 2020, and also for the one who are currently in grade 12, because the pandemic will have a trickle down effect. And all the deferral admissions that we see will have an effect on the current batch. So what are your next steps of recommendation to the students and parents? So Swati, if I may begin with you for this. Yeah. Thank you so much, Nidana. And it's a wonderful, great portion, in fact. And uh, first of all, before beginning, I would like to thank ICAE for making us a part of this conclave. Uh, now, as you will see, uh, students, if you see, they have actually began their journey after COVID, like within this COVID-19 thing, it was a fear zone in which they were living. The fear zone of that something unexpected is going to happen. And gradually there is a shift which I have seen in my students. They have become more confident thanks to the way the all the educators across the globe, the universities, the way they have come up with different virtual fairs. They have come up with webinars which has really made them very, uh, you can say, uh, they, they have really made them intelligent in a way. They have given them all the tools to make those right decisions. Like universities, they have come up that how are they going to provide certain online programs, how the visa processes are going to be. So they have they are already are knowledgeable enough in making certain decisions. Now coming on to how the batch of 2020, like specifically if I talk about my students, it depends from, uh, these are very individual de uh, decisions which they are making. Because we need to understand that COVID-19 has also brought a challenge in the financial status of certain families. So definitely there are few students who are saying that this is not the right time for my family to spend so much amount on my study abroad or something. So let me have better, uh, let me go for some Indian university. So even that change is also coming. There, are, there is a set of students who is saying because if they are science specific, they are actually looking for some science programs specifically like Nilanjana just shared the beautiful programs which the Trinity is offering. Now the challenge is that the science graduate, the person who wants to start with undergraduation would like to know that how the lab facilities are going to offer online programs. So those students who are going for online for sciences are planning to defer their uh, proposals right now, the offers. And there is another set of students who is very, uh, you can say, who are probably going for a little more liberal arts and all that. And they are they have beautiful offers with them from Ivy Leagues. And definitely they want to go for some online curriculum, even if the visas are not being offered. So I can say that it is divided. The batch of 2020, we can say that the decisions are not going in one flow. There are It all depends upon their individual needs, how they are curating those decisions. As far as the batch of 2021 is there. Definitely, this is one lot because as we all know, they work on their profiles, they go for their internships, summer programs. So suddenly there was a halt which came in. But then we also need to see that the vacuum was filled with so many different beautiful options being offered in like summer internships are there. There are wonderful summer programs coming up from Columbia, from Harvard. So students have got something in their minds and they are working on their profiles. They are working on their standardized tests. 
the batch of 2021. So those who are planning to do it then, they have got various outlets with them. Besides what I also feel is that post-COVID-19 situations are going to be very different in university. I think so that the job scenarios will also change. So 2021 and even the batches which are going to come later on, they will see a rapid shift in the type of jobs which are available and the courses which are going which the universities will offer. I was just going through one of the universities and I just saw that they have said that, oh, you want to do a BBA, you can go for an offline mode and an online mode. So that was very interesting that at times students who probably don't want to go out of their houses can still get an international degree at some stage. So I think that this is how uh, like the students are adapting both the current batch 2020 and the, the forthcoming batches. Thank you, Swati. And I completely agree. Um, the new normal is something that we hadn't expected, something we hadn't planned. And the new normal is this. And I think... Uh, uh, you know, kudos to the educators, but kudos to the students, to the way they have, uh, you know, taken up to that change. And uh, I completely agree with the fact that planning of any kind won't help. We have to take each day as it comes. And um, that's how I think the counseling is such because it's, it's never been as important as currently it is right now, you know, talking about mental health as well as uh, planning how their exit from school looks like for them. Asta, your perspective on this, please. Uh, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, counseling has become very, very important. I think uh, it is included in the three big C's as I see it. The three big C's post COVID-19 and lockdown, especially counseling, collaboration, as Professor Rajiv also said, collaboration is the key. And um, definitely collectivism, you know, we have to really understand as uh, Ms. Kanchi also spoke about how children uh, need to be resilient. So, you know, when we talk about resilience, we must understand we are in us, all of us are in the same situation, whether we are teachers, whether we are counselors, whether we are students, all of us have, uh, uh, you know, got more screen exposure now, digital fatigue, as uh, Vikram Jeet Singh was also speaking of, and uh, we all are facing same kind of situation. So now we also have to understand here is that we have to have a collectivist view of things and, uh, you know, not just think about our own individual interests. Now, when we talk about counseling, online counseling, if we see now children, as Dr. Nagpal also in the morning, we had a wonderful session with such eminent speakers. He spoke about how uh, privacy is so important for young adolescents. So now when we talk about online counseling and guidance for students, you know, there are a lot of students who are dealing with parental pressures related to choosing a career or a stream or applying to universities. So, you know, a lot of uh, parent, uh, parents intervene with their own self-interest and um, students can't really share their uh, points of views uh, when they are uh, taking this online counseling. So how to reach out to them and how to make them resilient in order to understand the situation and deal with certain crises in hand. Also give them hope in terms of looking at things positively and making the most of the moment of this moment at present, you know, during lockdown to research as research also is coming out, um, you know, when uh, I talk, I saw Nilanjana's presentation, such beautiful uh, ways of training students in different, different courses uh, related to science. So they are focusing on research. I think research needs to be focused everywhere today. So we can, we can actually, you know, shift the focus of counseling onto making students resilient and have their own research base onto which careers would be coming forward definitely post COVID-19 to deal with and not not get stressed rather become active participants in carrying forward such research to find out how which courses which colleges what will be the future options I think that is what is required and parents need to act as a, as a major support here without uh, taking away their right to privacy I think parents need to be their backbone and uh, also help them manage their time i children today you know they are uh, very very tech savvy they know technology better than us so parents need to help them uh, manage their time in such a way that they are able to utilize their present skills and knowledge in updating their knowledge also at the same time also uh, not get burnt out 
with so much of information you know there is there is pool of information as uh, swati also said lot of webinars are taking place lot of universities are there so you know there there is a pool of information where you know they need to filter out sort out and prioritize i think parents can guide them better there and we as counselors also can guide them better there so that, that's why i i think is the need of the hour. Asta, what a beautiful perspective! As Swati yeah. gave us a perspective about you know what our students looking at as as far as academics are concerned and their joining of colleges and what a beautiful perspective you gave in saying that how does the mental well being is so critical and how you know I think both what what counselors do and I think I agree to somewhere that every teacher needs to be a guidance counselor wherein you create the space for a student which is non threatening and non judgmental. because they are born in difficult times you know we were born in different times mm -hmm. and you have to also look at fulfilling um, you know the parents should not look at fulfilling their aspirations to their children you know and i think somewhere the hidden uh, con you know message that also came out when you were talking about as the is transferable skills you know because when you're studying online the kind of skills that you need when you're studying online vis a vis when you're inside the classroom and studying are very different so what kind of skills are we preparing our students for and you know i think a top down approach won't work so yeah some i think some beautiful takeaways uh, from this um you know I, I i have just tried to put my questions and i i you know keeping in mind of what parents are really asking but this is a question from a perspective of a student you know and when i look at it i think it's all it's so important um to to step out of your own shoes and to step into that student's shoes to see that how is high school looking like for me right if i look at the student who's currently in 9th or 10th or 11th or 12th you know your iq is important your intelligence quotient your eq is important admission officers are looking at which is your emotional quotient there's something called a cq which is your cultural quotient and there's something about called an sq which is your social quotient i don't know by the time the 9th graduates out of school how many qs will add to it so what are your recommendations as experts from your field uh for especially for students and i think some for parents as well that they should be doing to be college ready while they are being at home so currently as we know that the students are currently at home so what will be your recommendations to the students to how can they utilize their time to be more to be college ready and how can the application like uh, swati mentioned that students are you know missing out on internships and so how are we looking at it what are what are the different ways that you will recommend the students to to increase their profile their portfolio experts recommendations for that over to you asta for this uh, yes absolutely nitin i think that is also very important as i saw a lot of uh, participants today also questioning on how to control the screen time and how to channelize the physical energies of our children you know of students and uh, as it is you know we have gone online with our virtual classes education has gone online so much of information available on online so you know uh, to be honest i have lot of students i i personally deal with adolescents and uh, you know i have lot of students coming up to me and telling me a lot that has been happening on social media uh, apart from academics they are all there on social media so they talk about these uh, social conflicts in the sense uh, that that uh, actually the those conflicts that are now more prevalent online on social media so you know where, when we are talking about these things so, uh, so to say body shaming on social media for example taking up one issue you know so then i ask my students that why don't you research on how it is happening is it happening through making uh, forming memes online or Uh, com comments verbal comments or you know other cyber crime activities and then you know these students come up with different different presentations powerpoint presentations and we ask them to present that even involve their family members conduct survey so they they become very very active and they they are able to do that while managing time so it's us actually you know we as teachers as counselors as parents who can really help them manage their time and not get stressed and when i was talking about collectivist approach 
you know when you are talking about cultural quotient also we need to really understand i'll just add on with another simple example here i when i step out of the house today in such a pandemic situation i need to wear a mask not because uh, you know it's it's for my own safety but it's because i want to ensure other safety around and that is my social responsibility today even if i feel, if it's stupid if i find it stupid or if i don't look good i need to do that now this we need to pass on to these young adolescents this we need to pass on to students in the sense that you know you have to be socially responsible you have to also take responsibility of self keep safety of your own self or of your own being and at the same time be become cyber aware also because everything is going online and uh, you know we are having major use of technology during this situation so we need to uh, really have a good talk with young ones as parents as adults as counselors in order to give them that track that path that way to uh, deal with their anxieties insecurities and pressures the new kind of pressures they are facing i think that is very important and they'll be able to manage their time i i think i think once we have made them uh, go through that self realization and self introspection i think they are good enough to manage their time yes if if we find them getting distracted or getting addicted to online internet activities definitely then parents and counselors can come and play an active role so that's that's how i i can suggest parents to work on it so true so true i think responsibility um, and i think one also as educators and counselors we need to walk that talk right Absolutely. when we are trying to say that yes we need you to do that we expect that we're doing it we're showing them in action about how that needs to be done that was a bit about um, you know how we are looking at them being socially responsible and being responsible about or their own image on 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 you know social networks and all the other things swati i would like to uh, know the perspective in terms of um, how can they look at utilizing their time and building their profile or portfolio for a high school student and of course uh, asta covered the bit about how they need to be careful about uh, them being online and what are the things that they need to keep in mind but from your perspective what are the engagements that a high school student can look at uh, which can really really affect and you know uh, pump up their college application uh, while they are at home currently uh, so now over here uh, like what i feel nitina strongly is that we all as counselors we are very much aware that we are handling adolescents and the biggest challenge with adolescents is that every day they need that sort of um an external person coming in their lives and providing them the, that with uh, that intrinsic motivation which is a requirement for doing all this stuff now during this remote counseling the one uh, challenge which i faced was that students were coming for my webinars so all the webinars they were attending which the school was organizing they were going for their virtual fairs but what we strongly realized is that at this point of time it's very uh, like we feel that yes they are responsible and they should do this but they are not doing this so as professor vikram right now like the presentation which i was just going through his uh, words which he said he said that actually it comes from parents so this is the time when the counseling department and schools they are actually like we have started off with this where we are guiding parents that how they should ensure that that research skill which they want the student to have or the communication skill now over here when they are not in direct touch with their friends or with their social groups there is a, a vacuum which again has come up because they are not able to develop that communication but this is the time when parents need to intervene and they need to understand that that there are multiple ways of communicating and there are multiple ways of researching also so there is a responsibility on additional responsibility on parents that they can always take the help from the remote counseling centers but they need to ensure that the student is productively utilizing their time time management is the biggest factor so even if we say that students are good they will manage their time but chances are that they will not do that until unless the parents are not involved in the process now once the parents are involved what parents and students together needs to do is that they need to reflect and they need to identify their interest areas so at times we will get a call from a ninth grader who will say that i don't know what to do in this summer break so what we really need to do is that we can always ask them to go for certain psychometric tests 
with the help of psychometric test the student can identify their interest and can develop a hobby or a profile accordingly so i strongly feel that this is the time when the students first of all need to identify what exactly is their interest and then we come when then we narrow down that what according to their interest they can do a 9th or a 10th grader can definitely go for some summer programs as per their interest as far as internships are concerned so there are many websites like internshala is one of them like in our case our school we have a system where we have got parents who are providing online internships to our school but definitely there are many websites many companies who have come up and they are saying that why not you can always come up for internship that can be in designing that can be in assessing in finances that can be an it support so students are also volunteering that how we can be a host and we can manage a event which is happening online so as we see that yes th this is a challenging situation but there are beautiful ways and how it is coming up like over here when we see almas doing it beautifully for us the students can actually learn so many skills from her that this is how we can develop on certain skills so this is what we need to i think so that lot of um, ideas we can always have small group sessions peer group is something which also helps a lot so if in our schools at this point of time we can have small online peer groups where students they interact with each other and they have some common interest then definitely it's very easy to give them some common tasks during summers from the counselors end which can actually enhance their research skills their communication skills thinking skills as well as creativity so all these skills can be handled if it is done in a little organized way and definitely an important role has to be played by the parents over here during this time So this is what i strongly think. so true actually you know uh, you know when your child is little and when the parents are looking for the nursery admission how worried are they that you know what is the infrastructure of the school looking like what is how is the faculty what is the alumni i think your children always remain children you know you keep teaching them what you need to teach them but the exit also needs to be looked after very very well to say that you know is that college going to be the right fit is am i in, ensuring that beyond academia am i really giving the child the skills that are so required that make him ready for the future which is so unknown so unpredictable none of us realize that we'll be meeting each other virtually and having those conversations so everything is set out to change and the new normal is definitely going to be redefined in in a lot many ways um i definitely keep time in my mind always so my last question um, you know before we is uh, before we say you know hand over back to almas is that um you know what is your advice to students and parents during this time what is your advice what what advice would you give to them that they should follow and they should look up one of course came in already that everything we look at right now we should look at as, at this as an opportunity that two of you clearly have mentioned uh, in both your questions in different ways but beyond that what is that one or two piece of advice that you would want students and parents as well as educators to keep in mind so swati big will begin with you Uh, so now over here as we all know that students and parents in fact we we started this journey of uh, covid 19 with little fear and anxiety so the very simple advice is that parents because they are the ones who are at the proximity if we talk about students proximity they are the only social support which is available to them so parents actually need to play a very important role they need to handle the anxiety the fear of the student in terms of health in terms of the changes the economic changes of their own household or probably later on how it is going to happen they need to handle uh, their queries as well small queries that okay fine uh, can you please tell me like for example parents keep on asking their uh, like uh, students which i have heard from my like i just attended my ptm and parents were very anxious to say that uh, how can i help them in handling their anxiety but they also want to do something and i am probably not that it savvy so we need to understand that the parent need to also learn on certain skills they need to handle their anxiety students in turn i think so they need to always reach out to the options which are available to them so if they feel that the counselor is available online they should take appointments on zoom they should definitely go and talk to the counselor who is there they should always discuss their fears with the parents for means definitely they should do that whatsoever gap between them even if it exists they should cross those boundaries talk to parents 
talk to their faculty members, talk to counselors, figure out what universities are offering, get hold of good forums. So if they can get attached with good student forums, which are being run by universities, isn't that is a wonderful idea to keep you updated what is happening in terms of jobs, in terms of online programs. So I think so parents as a support system needs to function right now and students need to at least go out of their uh, space and they need to approach all the people who are ready to help them at this crisis situation. So this is the best thing and they need to come from the learning zone, like from the fear zone, they have come to the learning zone, but now they need to motivate themselves that they have to enter a growth zone where they can benefit from whatever they are getting, whether it's online classes or online internships. So how they can utilize best of this situation is something which is my suggestion. Beautifully put, Swati. Roles are definitely changing. And uh, parents need to, I think, uh, I think what, what will really emerge out beautifully is what schools and teachers have actually done and are doing. And, uh, you know, what comes out so comfortably and naturally to educators, uh, you know, I think parents, once they step into that shoes, they'll be able to see that from that perspective. So Asta, over to you for your thoughts on this. Absolutely. I think uh, what Swati meant was this is the this is a great opportunity. This is a great time to enhance family bonding, reduce the gaps, the communication gaps, talk out, talk out to each other as parents and children, talk out uh, one's fears, insecurities, anxieties. And I believe parents should also allow children to act as parents. As uh, Dr. Nagpal also mentioned in the morning, you know, it's very, very important because children today know so much. Uh, you know, they have their smartphones in hand and there is so much of information available. They know, know so much uh, that parents wouldn't also know, uh, won't know. So I think it's important parents allow them to act and take responsibility. I know students structuring routine for parents. You know, parents' routine have actually got so unstructured, but students, because they have their online classes, they get up early, they want their parents to get up early, do yoga in the meanwhile, they attend their online classes, and then they can have their own time, probably get hold of their uh, remote controls and watch whatever they want to watch, and then relax. So I think uh, it's a great opportunity, and making the most out of it is what we all need to do, embrace the present and also uh, not to forget I think everybody is talking about it the attitude of gratitude and uh, being uh, helpful to one another in these stressful times and not judge as you said being non-judgmental being supportive of teachers also who are there taking virtual classes and available for you to ask your queries ask your questions and i think gaps have already re been uh, reduced with use of technology we have whatsapp groups students can text our students if they have any problem you know that is there but the only challenge is where uh, i also you know when i remember what vikramjeet said that children who don't have access to all this, how to reach out to them. So when I was talking about collectivism, Nitin, I want everybody to think over it and, you know, really think how, uh, you know, it can be so difficult for others around us. And, you know, we need to be more humble and more helpful in order to bring society together in dealing with this, these difficult times, so so to say. So that, that that's... Uh, that I can say, I think uh, in in uh, our uh, you know uh, desire to view garden behind a valley, we should not forget the our own uh, garden where you know roses are blossoming. I, I think that is what that is how I would like to sum it up. You know, we should not forget what we have uh, with us right now, and uh, absolutely we need to make the most out of it. Absolutely, Asta. Beautifully said. Gratitude is so important. And I think uh, this, you know, planning of any kind has failed now. And uh, what another thing that this, you know, pandemic has taught us is that each one of us has gotten out of our own comfort zones. And, uh, you know, as Dr. Nagpal said that everything that, you know, even the planet, how it's reacting, what it's doing, the world needs healing. The planet needed healing. You know, we we rushed rush too much. We, we didn't want to stop on our own. And here was a planet telling us that, you know, hold on, reflect. Those are important virtues. 
um so of course and i think uh, this these were you know things that we really wanted to discuss and i i agree that the uncertainties will continue until the pandemic is truly contained in most parts of the global uh, either with widespread availability of an effective and safe vaccine or at least significant medical progress on the therapeutic front so do stay abreast as swati said and posts you know look at the post in the webinars and the news that's coming in stay healthy stay safe and continue to hone on to your academic and extracurricular skills within the confines of restrictions imposed in your ear for a safer and better future for all of us um so here we are uh, ms almis uh, we wanted to keep the time uh, definitely in place and if anyone has any questions all three of us will be very happy to take that on over to you Love to unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very thoughtful and very informative discussion. And we are now open for the questions. If any one of you want to say something or ask something, you can drop in your question in the chat box or in the Q and A box. So wait for two minutes and then we'll move on to our next speaker. i must say very well moderated nitana and very thank you and both of you astha and swati very thoughtful and very informative thank you so much thank you so much so i think we don't have any questions right now if anyone has questions they can drop in at the q and a and we all three will be happy to answer those questions uh, one statement i guess uh, one question from arshana goel uh, we all have come out of our comfort zones yes but we have uh, learned so so much so it is all about your perspective how we look at things she just wanted to say this uh, she says beautifully put across thank you for encouraging us ms yeah. arshana <laughs> it means a lot to all of us as much as i think um, uh what asta has been saying the collective approach i think if all of us together come in and we want to you know redefine something something united we all stand and as educators that's all that we can do definitely so now moving on to our um, next presenter uh, mr raul de souza he is indian subcontinent and gulf area manager of uh, institute of marangoni and he will be discussing enhancing the future over to you raul thank you almaz thank you everyone for being present here this afternoon it's been a long day but i hope a very very fruitful day i think we have all uh, gained a lot learned a lot from each other and uh, based on all the uh, sharings this morning so i've changed a bit my presentation and uh, considering this situation we are in i want to share with you what uh, is to marangoni is currently and has been working in fact for the last 10 years on uh, constantly uh, changing improving because one thing we have learned is we all need to change and i don't know whether it's by chance that last year our theme of the year for students was fashion mutation mutation how much we are ready to change because what a student is when they come after high school into the college for the undergrad program and at the end of 3 years how they transform themselves it's very important that they are open to change to learning do things uh, which will not be comfortable for them but it's important to be open and that's when they can absorb and really share so i'm going to share my screen and start my presentation right away uh, because uh, i have very little time <laughs> can you all see the screen yes thank you and so at my that in the master of fashion is and everything is uh, just going to do something that I like my dream is the, to have a brand uh, you don't know the school my name is Chris I'm on the 20 and I'm going to do this 
pick off the police team. I want to be a fashion designer. The meaning of fashion. Um, I want to be a fashion designer. Stand there with this <laughs> As you all know, Istituto Marangoni is one of the first schools for um, fashion, art and design education in Europe, started in 1935. So we have been really instrumental in um, protagonists being the pioneers in the industry. <clears throat> and, uh, oops, I don't know why this is. Uh, so uh, it's not been the first time, you know, that we have uh, come out being 85 years old, we have come up, overcome a lot of difficulties in previous years, previous decades also. Uh, but especially in the last 10 years, we have really uh, worked in evolving ourselves. You know, preparing for not tomorrow, but far ahead. Uh, by every day, constantly uh, innovating and improving our didactic plan, our pedagogy, which is Italianness, which is very, you know, intense and constantly improving that, making it more universal for everyone. So over the years, I mean, right from 2009, uh, we ha have reinvented ourselves, kept on reinventing as an institute, not just teaching of fashion, art or design, but uh, each year collaborating, uh, expanding. And so from uh, a small school of just about uh, 1,500 students, uh, we have expanded to nearly, I mean, five and a half thousand students each year. But not just in Milan, but across all Shanghai, Paris, Milan Design itself, Shenzhen, Florence, Mumbai, and then finally Miami, which we opened various campuses, truly making us a global institute. And that is very important. And so these 10 intense, wonderful years, we have succeeded in conveying to our students the enthusiasm, passion, the courage and the resilience that makes Marangoni, you know, and we hope some way to become also an important value. Yeah, uh, as a brand. So one of the greatest opportunities that Istitut Marangoni and all of us in fact have is the greatest challenge is the future. And that is artificial intelligence. So today I want to share with you the impact that uh, artificial intelligence will be for all of us, not only students, but in teachers, faculty, and the world at large. How it intervenes in our life today and in the future, offering some points for reflection on the way it can be integrated in the world of fashion, art, and design. I'm doing it in this context, and then of course you can take it to every context possible. What it can offer to these disciplines and what eventually it might take from them, what we can take from them, and how it can interact 
with those who some of us like ourselves have a very important role to play in these areas i think starting from uh, 2025 nano robots are destined to become more intelligent than our current medical technology contributing to the annihilation of diseases that still affect us like in fact the virus for that matter our nutrition will be entrusted to nano systems the self and self driving cars will fill up our roads leaving flesh and blood drivers a minority a few years from 2030 a virtual reality truer than reality awaits us together with totally renewable and cheap forms of energy finally after 2045 artificial intelligence will be a billion times more powerful than biological intelligence that is ours and nanotechnologists will be virtual farmers able to create food from nothing there will be a day a precise moment but not yet marked in our agenda in which technology becomes growth will become irreversible one moment before man will still be in charge of everything and the next moment he will be governed it will be like a technological coup d'etat a so called technology singularity <clears throat> and uh, nothing will be before as before you know but in the meantime we will become more brilliant young healthy and smart it will be uh, the end of what we know and the beginning of something of which we know nothing one of the main reasons we have an increase in the number of people for example population plays an important role is that because we have access to edu education significantly increasing the ability to create innovation if we take it took us nearly tens of thousands of years to arrive at a 1.6 billion people the total we had reached at the beginning of the 20th century and then we have shot up to five times that total in a single century and on to almost 8 billion i think in a few years so if we take a look at development of technologies we can see how since 1900 we have been witnessing an incredible increase in technology and innovation in all fields for example many industries only appeared in the 20th century if we consider that 90% of the data available in this moment has been generated only in the last 2 3 years we can sense how we are dealing with a journey that is only just starting and that it requires adaptation of a clear and shared rules on the development process of the science we speak of uh, artificial intelligence on one hand with admiration and on the other hand with a sense of fear as if uh, artificial uh, intelligence should steal us all so to take uh, advantage in terms of opportunities production but most of all profit especially when we imagine applying the cybergenic revolution to areas of thinking to which we have uh, accorded strong creative components and for this reason deep human or to human such as fashion of course a sector in which by nature the human element is still very strong very predominant it is perhaps for this reason that fashion is so far made uh, little use of the potential of artificial intelligence compared to the other sectors like science and uh, uh, pro, uh, production and manufacturing it has only limited itself to chat robots however new horizons are appearing artificial intelligence can be in fact help to create real fashion collections there are already examples of garments created by cyber designers on the basis of endless database and image and information the question that needs to be asked is which point can of these can be considered actual collections for 
example, this interactive changing room. So the augmented rea realities, AR, can help potential customers try the garments as they were in front of a mirror. And so choose the look and guide their purchases. I'll be jumping the videos because of lack of time. Okay. The next point is 3D printing. With 3D printing, it, is, it can open new roads in the drawing and production of garments, going beyond the limits imposed by traditional manufacturing without sur surrendering the identity and uniqueness of every creative art. This is the collection of Iris Van Herpen, who created sculpture clothes blended in 3D technology with old fashioned manual skills. So many such sectors are there, blockchain, sustainability. But the most important question and in some ways perhaps the most disturbing is given that machines repeat what we teach them, often better than ourselves, is it possible to teach them to taste and style? Can we transmit the creative act? Can we teach fashion to machines? Fashion is an intangible concept, a complex system of values based on style, culture, money, image, status, and placement of the self in a precise position within the social environment, the loki and the momentum. And this aspect, what you see now, is the transformational creativity. That type of eureka enlightenment that combines stimuli experiences, emotions, individual heritage, that is typically the most human form and which is impossible to reproduce using an algor algorithm logic. So I said, but we don't have to fear because the human element is very important. And that's where Italian, is, Italy, Italian companies, Italian institutes like Marangoni have played a very important role. Italy for this unclassifiable genius in its elective homeland is an expression of unattainable love for the beautiful and for the well-made. It does not follow a reproductive grammar, but simply draws up new rules. And it is a source of pride for especially Italian designers and designers from all over the world who come to Italy. But it has a very deep Italian black box. This is what no machine will ever be able to reproduce. one of the world, world's most expensive fashion shows by Dolce & Gabbana. And so at Marangoni, we have developed over the years our own Marangoniness, 
this creative process, which is important to help the next generations develop with artificial intelligence education. And here it is us who train the new generation in a sector that can only in part be modified by the permanent technology revolution. Let's start from the belief that new technologies, when we fully exploit them, their possibilities will change not only the way we learn, but what we learn and as well as how we work, how we collaborate, how we communicate. Artificial intelligence education will never replace teachers. But what is possible to predict is a future in which the role of the teacher will continue to evolve and be transformed. A future where teachers time will be used more efficiently, more effectively and where teachers expertise will be better developed, deployed, leveraged and augmented. Although some might find the concept of artificial intelligence education alienating, it offers on the contrary the possibility of a teaching and learning strategy that is more personalized, flexible, inclusive and engaging. It can provide teachers and learners with the tools that allow to respond not only to what is being learned, but also how it is being learned. It can help learning develop the knowledge and skills that employees, employers are seeking through more sophisticated learning environments, enabling collaborative learning, a different, difficult task for one teacher to do alone, but, but making sure that the right group is formed for the task at hand or by providing targeted support at just the right time. We must look towards a future where extraordinary education, that is artificial intelligence education tools which support teachers in meeting the needs of all new learners. What we can acknowledge is that Istituto Marangui schools methodologies are by definition and through their DNA globalized and borderless. And yet Italian in the Renaissance concept of the term based on the artists and his workshop. Synthesis these clarities can find a perfect way forward from artificial intelligence. So what we shall expect from this teaching revolution? Active learning spaces, which place the student in a direct contact with the matter before studying. New knowledge is generated and shared continuously through brainstorming, debates, group works that exercise the strength of the creative thought. Dynamic teaching spaces where performance is on one hand and is one and a half times greater than found in traditional classrooms for frontal, with frontal teaching. New tools be functional to this new education. Digital workstations, interactive whiteboards, touch screens, mobile seats, holographic projections, virtual reality viewers, etc. Cobots, educational robots can help teachers to differentiate, to differentiate skills, stimuli, information from every single student, creating tailored educational pathways. Artificial intelligence for education will become a reality in the next 25 years, creating students who are increasingly evolved and aware and training the workers of the world that will come. With this, I'd like to end with a very important quote. It is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent that survives. It is the one that is the most adaptable to change. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rao. Thank you. I guess we have one question waiting for you. From okay. Varsha Ratta. So, ma'am, you can go on and ask your question. 
You have to unmute yourself, ma'am, and you can ask your question. <laughs> If you're not able to unmute yourself, you can uh, actually drop in your question in the Q&A box. Yes, we have to wait for her yes, sure. question. So we can move on to our next speaker and we can take her question once she'll post it. So I would now like to invite Mr. Naresh Punshi from Manipal University, Dubai, and he will be uh, sharing his presentation on uh, preparing the youth and their parents for online education through digital learning. So Mr. Naresh, over to you. Thank you very much, Almas. Uh, I hope I'm audible and uh, loud and clear. Yes. Thank you very much, Almas. Uh, so first of all, um, good afternoon, everyone uh, who has since uh, more 11. Thank you, Nazir. Thank you, IPA, uh, for uh, allowing me to speak in front of all the distinguished uh, educationalists like Dr. Aruna Bhuta, Dr. Nagpal. It was an amazing panel discussion that we had with uh, Ms. Watt, uh, Ms. Tua, and uh, Ms. Mahajan. Um, and again, thank you to all the counselors from different schools who are available here. Um, I will make sure that my, I don't have a presentation, but I have a small um, a content to share with you to talk to you actually and I will keep my talk uh, very specific to the uh, conference uh, that was role of educators with, uh, lockdown now I personally believe uh, that uh, classroom learning cannot be replaced by online education imagine uh, in the last uh, few days we have been seeing Ramayana and Mahabharata and imagine uh, learning um, actually online how how uh, miserable that would have been. But again, today's situation is such that I'm seeing some of the football coaches training students online, making sure that uh, they have some kind of activities happening within home. So over here, everyone today needs to work collectively to make online learning possible for uh, children. Again, we are very lucky enough to not uh, face the situation of online learning when we were studying. But due to the COVID situation today, most of the schools are, have remained closed. And even after they open, the mode of function within schools will be very different, uh, especially the social distancing phase. So COVID has definitely been a disruption, uh, a huge disruption in the education industry. And in a phase where social distan distancing will be a priority to ensure learning continues, uh, schools are shifting to digital learning methods to facilitate remote learning for students. It is indeed a movement uh, that was not expected by students, by the editors, by the parents, teachers. However, it seems that everyone is now preparing themselves well to adapt to shift from classroom learning to online learning. And we at Manipal Dubai, we have already, we had actually started online learning much before the lockdown had implemented in India. And it was through the experience that through that experience, uh, I'm going to choose my topic. Uh, which is going to be preparing the youth and parents uh, for online education to digital age. And not only learning, uh, in fact, Manipal Dubai um, had a full-fledged online cultural fest at Manipal uh, Dubai, uh, which was running the entire of April and May, where students were participating. Uh, they had contests into photography and all this uh, in different events, activities that were happening. Um, in the entire seminar from 11, I would say that really up today, uh, the conversation was, uh, uh, and, or the, the way uh, the entire points were discussed by Vikramjeet uh, Singh, because I believe that uh, he didn't just speak up as an educator, but he spoke as a parent also, he spoke as a citizen also. And, and there were a lot of points that, that uh, every one of us today would be thinking about. So the shutting down of schools and suspension of a lot of hobby classes uh, and phone uh, sessions have upset the entire physical routine of students. And we have been hearing this saying from our times that uh, all study and, and no play makes John die. So this surely might be happening right now. Uh, but due to this, uh, our homes have transformed to classrooms and every parents today 
uh, are acting as a teacher or as a facilitator to, to the teacher actually. No one can replace a teacher or um, no parent can replace the designation or the position of a counselor or a teacher, but definitely they're acting as a facilitator to them. So schools are now functioning and teaching through digital content with the help of platforms like Zoom that we are having right now, we have Skype. And for many students actually, uh, if uh, Ms. Watt and, and the other counselors, Ms. Dua and Marjan would agree with me that uh, for many students actually, this will be the first online experience for them of getting a counseling online. And hence it is important for us, for we as an educators to prepare the youth and the parents for online education through digital learning. Now, definitely, as I shared earlier, that it is not possible for anyone to replace the role of teachers because they are the experienced ones to teach the students. But again, uh, parents need to be the new teachers. And even Dr. Nagpal and Dr. Bhuta rightly said that the students are learning from their family members, their parents. Unknowingly, we, the parents, would be teaching kids with vocabulary, with actions, behavior that is not needed for the kids. For example, there are a lot of parents who might have lost their jobs. There might be financial difficulty in the house. There might be depression that will be uh, coming in within the house. And how in this kind of atmosphere, how a parent who, who maybe has a, just a one BHK or just a one room kitchen, how would they prepare the kids for making sure that they are not affected? So I'm going to share a few points, but again, with a very vague example. Uh, considering that each of our kids or each of our students are cars, and I'm not saying a normal car, I'm talking about high-end uh, sports car, which I would name as Ferrari. So I will relate with the kids and Ferrari. So I have a few points I'm going to share, taking into consideration the kids and the things that prepare in the new era or the digital learning era. So when I usually ask it, what makes Ferrari a Ferrari, a lot of students would say, the logo, the look of the car, the speed, but most of most of them will not answer the one important uh, point I'm looking for is the engine. So here, when I say engine, I'm comparing the kids as their mental and the physical strength. That's the engine for kids. I believe that parents need to ensure that even during this lockdown, the physical and the mental health of the kids is kept into play making sure that they keep an active tab of their physical and mental health, not only for kids, but also for the parents themselves. Um, the next thing that I talk about Ferrari is uh, making sure that, uh, if, for example, in case if I get a Ferrari from abroad and, and drive it on Indian roads, especially in the rainy season, it will not be functional. For a Ferrari, uh, definitely a proper road required. And that's the reason it is very important for parents to make sure that they have a separate desk or a small is that is set up for the students, making sure their learning, their digital learning is smooth, not disturbed by any music around. And that brings to my next point, which will be disturbance of concentration. Now example, I'm driving a Ferrari at a speed of 280, 300. A little bit of distra uh, distraction, a disturbance here and there, and possibly there would be a crash. And the same way, when a kid is doing an online learning, I believe uh, parents, need to be guided or parents need to be educated that the, the background music, like uh, if a student having an online class, avoid playing of music in the background, uh, avoid having your kitchen chores going on at that point of time, which may create a disturbance for the kid. Um, and again, uh, Ferrari is not only the engine, it's not only the logo, it's not only the speed, but it also the way it looks. So I would also request the parents to make sure that the kids are also dressed properly, appropriately when they're having this online session because that creates a lot of difference in, when they are sitting in front of their parents, uh, sorry, when they're sitting in front of their teachers and attending the online sessions. Um, also, I would request parents to make sure that uh, they also keep a tab of making sure that they have a proper Wi-Fi connectivity in the household because as we experienced a little bit right now when Raul was speaking, there was a lot of uh, uh, the voice that came into us was not uh, very clear. And even I'm facing a connectivity issue right now, Wi-Fi is down, but I had a backup. I had a backup. So making sure that the parents are keeping a tab of this also while the online classes are on. And at the same time, whatever online classes are happening, the direction also needs to be right. For example, what I mean to say with direction is that in case if I have to travel from point A to point B in my Ferrari, and in case if I'm not going 
towards point A to point B, but I'm going from point A backwards to a different point, which is a point C. I will never be able to reach my destination. That's point A. That's why having a proper monitoring of what the students are learning online also needs to be kept intact. And uh, most importantly, when we are having uh, the Ferrari race, uh, have there are proper and timely laps that needs to be taken. And and as Vikram Vikram Jitra rightly said that just giving them, just giving the students some work or tasks to be completed by taking printouts um, is not going to help. Making sure that you give them interactive sessions, making sure that you give them some physical activities like introducing of some kind of Zumba classes or including, including some kind of yoga meditation classes in your session or particularly in a day, 15 minutes, 20 minutes is definitely going to add a lot of impact on the way students are going to do their online learning. And again, we, uh, we educators also need to understand, or teachers also need to understand that when we are in a classroom session, it's not possible for all the students to be an introvert or, or to be an extrovert for that matter. Um, some of them would be active, uh, would be able to give the right kind of uh, response to you, but it's not possible for all the students, like in physical classroom, it's not possible for all the students to ask a question in kind of a seminar where they feel comfortable to ask a question. And that's the reason we need to make sure that the digital learning, the online learning, uh, because it's here to stay and it's not going away, it's definitely here to stay. And it's very important to ensure that we as educators. Need to address kind of teaching uh, style. They also need to be uh, taught about how the online program needs to happen uh, in a proper manner. Almas is doing is moderating here in, in a very efficient manner. The same way, I believe that teachers would need to be taught that how from the start to the end, if it's a two-hour session, how it needs to be planned uh, properly. How do you interact and keep the students uh, active along with you? And at the same time, the parents also need to be educated or need to be prepared of you may have your own set of problems. You may have your own set of difficulties that you might be facing due to COVID. But again, uh, I'm very sure that for every parent, their kid's education is something which is of uh, a priority. And that's where I believe that we all, whoever is listening to this conversation right now, I believe, or whoever will be seeing this conversation through a, through a recorded mode, whether it's a parent, whether it's a student, whether it's a educator, whether it's a university or, or a counselor, we all are in this together in this COVID situation. And we as educators together will be able to surely fail our students through. And which I would say thank you very much. Uh, I would I preferred I kept it short and sweet. Uh, but I, I prefer to keep it uh, in regards to the conference that we had today. Again, I'm too small to speak in front of this distinguished uh, speakers that we had in the morning. But this is my thought and this is my share to all the counselors available of you. Thank you very much on behalf of Manipal Dubai campus. Thank you, Naresh. A very uh, sweet and crisp from your side. And I totally agree that parents uh, do play a very important role. They have to get engaged with uh, their children uh, in day-to-day -day life to, be, uh, to make them aware of what is happening. So as we all say that... Uh, uh, homes are the first institutions where children study. So you have to be involved with your children to make them aware of the situation. And on that note, I would like to take a question from Anita Bish. She's raising her hand. Uh, Ma'am, you can ask your question. Yes, ma'am. I guess there's some technical issue at her end. So apart from few technical glitches here and there, I hope we uh, had a very good session today. And I would like to thank you everyone for being uh, with us very patiently. I know it was a very long day for you, for everyone. Uh, and I would like to thank all our university partners for being with us, supporting us through this. and. Uh, as 
we all uh, know that this is these are the trying times for everyone and we have uh, our uh, children our students look up to us so we have to be ready with every uh, thing we have to be able to help them as bruce lee once said that uh, knowing is not enough we must apply willing is not enough we must uh, is not enough we must do and i hope we all are uh, taking something uh, back with us and we will definitely apply what we have learned today and we will willingly do our part to build and help our society uh, and we at ic india will try to organize more such sessions for you and we will definitely be sending in your e certificates soon we'll be mailing them to you till then uh, this is goodbye from our side uh, stay home stay safe thank you everyone for joining us thank you very much for all the panelists all the speakers and all the attendees for joining us today thank you almas thank you so much thank you very much almas thank you to all the counselors thank you naresh thank you everyone thank you bye Thank you, Anna. Bye bye. Good luck.